Arpedia Online, known as the best virtual reality game, which, in just over a year since its release, has garnered a record number of players. A specially designed capsule is used to enter the game to trick the five senses into making what is happening indistinguishable from reality, allows you to create a character that is a complete match for the user. And it's all combined with the latest artificial intelligence that makes NPCs and monsters act like they have real feelings. Game offers a fun and relaxing experience without too much stress. Because of the popularity, people started to follow the actions of the top players. But one of them was particularly active. This player's name was Bartz, and he played for the warrior class. The reason why he was followed more than the higher-ranked players was that making groups in Arpedia Online was common sense, and he was a hardcore solo player who could beat the dragon. There's been a lot of rumors surrounding Bars, and some players literally went crazy trying to find out his real name. Some people thought he was connected to the developers, or the son of a millionaire who spent a fortune on the game. But all these guesses were wrong, because the Bartz was actually an unemployed and rather miserable man named Gene. Other than being the best player of the most popular game in the world, he had no other achievements in his life. To be honest, he had little interest in real life. One day, for no reason at all, Jin entered the game, even without using the capsule. But worst of all, he appeared in the middle of the town square, completely naked. Maybe it was a system crash or something. After all, our hero appeared on a completely empty account. And when I say empty account, I mean completely empty. There were no, not even the most basic things that are given at the start of the game. Gene searched the entire inventory. He even contacted customer support, but to no avail. When suddenly he got a new notification that his account had been cancelled, and now he has to start all over again. And so ended the story of the Lone Wolf, Dragon Slayers. But the end of something means a new beginning. But still, Gene wasn't going to give up. He called support every day, not insisting that his account had been hacked. But all he heard in response was that his account was fine. After contacting tech support once again, Gene couldn't stand it and screamed, You don't understand. My bars was still in open beta, and his level has been reset and his stuff is gone. When the support operator heard this story, he got embarrassed and said, I see the character you're talking about, but he was deleted five days ago. Interestingly enough, at the time, Gene was visiting his grandmother. So there's no way he could have deleted the character. Whatever the case may be, a deleted account cannot be restored. Ever since then, Gene's main goal in life has been to track down and get revenge on the hacker who deleted his character. Arpedia Online has an item durability system. Each one consumes it during use. If an object is used too often without repairing it, sooner or later its durability reaches zero. And the item breaks. To avoid this, players will seek out blacksmiths who can repair their items. And in this business, it all depends on the level. The more expensive and better the equipment, the better the blacksmith you can trust. What happens if there's a great blacksmith who can fix things for next to nothing? That's right. Everyone will take their items to him. The Bars was outfitted with a legendary outfit. The hacker couldn't just throw it away. If he sold everything before he deleted the character, then Jin can find him on the trail of those sales. And to carry out this plan, the genie needs to create a new character who can become a first-class blacksmith. The first thing to do is pick a name. Gene wanted to choose something short and strong like Bars, and he chose the name Zik. Jin was certain that Zeke would be the best blacksmith in all of Arpedia, but reality turned out to be far more brutal than he could have imagined. I've been to over a dozen smiths in the city, and every one of them has been turned down, even though he originally created his character as a blacksmith, but no one wanted to teach him his craft from the start. In Arpedia, there are two ways to get a manufacturing trade, either buy a book of skills, or learn while working from NPCs. The second way allows you to earn money and gain experience in the profession, but everyone avoids it. The reason is that NPC tinkers have a pretty nasty temper. Most of all, Jin tried to avoid seeing Pabuchi. After all, he always got angry and yelled at him for no reason when he came to fix the Bartz's equipment. But this, the last of the smiths in this city, to whom Zeke has not yet come. So you can consider this his last chance. Upon entering the hangar, Zeke said, Hello, I would like to become a blacksmith, the best blacksmith in the world. Smiling in a steely voice, the blacksmith replied, No chance. It's clear from one look that you'll never make it. But Zeke was not okay with that. He begged to be given one chance to show his capabilities. Though a blacksmith doubted our hero's abilities. But he decided to give him one chance, so to speak, took him on as a trainee. But he wasn't going to let Zeke behind the anvil. The first quest was to chop huge logs. All these logs our hero needs to chop before the end of the day. If Zeke did well, the blacksmith promised to give him a real task worthy of a blacksmith. 
At any time, our hero can abandon this quest. But then he will never become a blacksmith, and will never realize his plan of revenge. At first, chopping wood seemed like a simple task. But considering that Zeke had no skills and was a beginner, it took a tremendous amount of effort to chop down a single stump. But you had to at least hit the log first. Zeke has been chopping wood for hours, but has yet to make any meaningful progress. When all of a sudden, a guy walking by said, Oh, I think it's all about kinship. Remember when they asked you for your date of birth during character creation? It seems to determine affinity for different professions. That's why getting started pumping could get very difficult. Zeke couldn't believe his ears. He thought the date of birth was just a formality. This guy's stuck in the apprentice program for the same problem. That Zeke has. It would seem that you can create a new character. But not everything is so simple. You have to go through the hell of bureaucracy to do it. So now it's better to concentrate on the task at hand. Zeke had something that set him apart from the rest of the blacksmith's apprentices. He was motivated, despite the setbacks. Zeke continued chopping wood. And over time, he made significant progress. He almost stopped missing the logs. And one blow was enough to cut Polino in half. Despite everything, Zeke still managed to finish before sunset. Why the blacksmith was clearly surprised. And being completely exhausted, Zeke went to the blacksmith and said, I told you I could do it. Now you're going to teach me, right? To which the man replied emphatically, No, no way. Holding out a sword to our hero, the blacksmith said, Here you go. Runkle mine. Get ten lumps of black coal. For Zeke, the Rankle Mine was now an impregnable fortress. After all, the recommended level for visiting it was 45. And that's because of the boss, the boar. Zeke has now reached level 10. That's certainly not enough to fight a fierce boar. But our hero wasn't about to back down. Now he is ready to do anything for his revenge. But before he went to the mine, Zeke said, Will you promise to make me a blacksmith if I fulfill this errand? And Pabuchi made the promise. The next morning, Zeke received a mission. He had to go to the location marked by Pabuchi and get ten units of black coal. Mining coal turned out to be a lot harder than handing wood, if you just had to hit the log and hit it hard. You can't do that with rock. To extract coal, you find a weakened spot in the rock. Swing the pickaxe in a smooth but powerful motion. And strike! After several agonizing hours, Zick was still able to crack the stone and get his first coal. Apparently, he's still got a lot of experience in the game. In total, Zick spent about 12 hours in the mine. And in that time, he was able to extract the required amount of coal. Finally, Zeke has completed his quest to change professions. And as soon as the coal is at Pobuchi's, our hero will become a real blacksmith. Just as soon as Zeke wanted to leave the Renkel Valley. There he was, a fierce boar. The only thing Zeke could do to survive an encounter with a boar was to just run away. Furious Boar is a boss that appears in a random place once a week. And it was our hero's bad luck that he showed up before him. Since Zick was counting on the crafting profession, he didn't spend experience points in health, so he wouldn't be able to survive even one hit. And once again, Zeke's experience helps him. He may not be able to fight the boss, but he can dodge his very predictable attacks. But it wasn't long before it became clear that the Fury Boar was focused only on Zeke, completely ignoring the other players. So you can't run for long. But in Arpedia, artisans aren't built for combat. But playing in virtual reality means that the character is connected to a real body. And the emphasis is on realism. If you have combat experience and a sixth sense, it is possible to defeat a monster even in unequal conditions. Knew the weak spot of a raging boar was right in his forehead. No matter how weak the damage is, he can win if he hits it right on target. But the gap in their strength and levels is too great. The fierce boar was able to repel the Zix blow. The biggest problem is that the boar has more agility than Zeke. Therefore, it will be very difficult to attack him, staring straight into the eyes of the rushing monster. Zeke thought, If I'd known this was coming, I would have bought agility potions beforehand. The only way to survive is to use the boar's weight and speed against it, but that plan was too risky. And then, Zeke thought he should try to escape from the boss. But that option was quickly abandoned, because no matter what, he still bars. The character may be gone, but the experience is always with him. When suddenly, our hero felt a sudden weakness. And a second later, he received a notification that his stamina level was low. Now only a true miracle can save our hero. And then, someone attacked the raging boar with a light arrow. Whoever fired that arrow, Zik owes that person his life. Our hero turned around and saw an incredibly beautiful archer, who had fired the very arrow that had saved Zeke. When all of a sudden, the girl said, Geez, what do we do now? I didn't think I'd do so little damage. 
After the archer attacked the raging boar, he switched to her. Seeing that the girl was frightened, Zik shouted, Hey, what are you waiting for? Shoot him right in the forehead. That's his weak spot. To trust a stranger you've never seen before is very foolish. But she had no choice. Shooting the monster in the forehead, the girl took off as much as 720 health points. By the way, this archer's name is Sia. And thanks to our hero. She was able to destroy such a strong monster alone for the first time in her entire life. Kaki suddenly Sia, walked up to Zeke, grabbed him by his shoulders, said, Thanks for helping me out. I've never seen you before. Such physical proximity made Zik feel uncomfortable, and he simply ignored the girl's question. Our hero broke free from the girl's grasp and ran away as fast as he could. As he ran away, he thanked her for saving him. However, Sia was sure that they had met before, for she sensed something familiar in our hero. As soon as Zeke returned to town, he went straight to the smithy to give him the coal. It's funny that Jin had spent more than a thousand hours in the game, but had never seen this mineral before. After receiving the bag of coal, the blacksmith said, Wow, honestly, I didn't even expect you to be able to pull it off. But you surprised me. I have to admit, I was wrong about you. You can work with that kind of stamina. I'm hiring you. Finally, Zik became a blacksmith. His eyes literally shone with joy. However, this is just the first step in his plan for revenge. He has a long and difficult road ahead of him. By confirming his intention, Jin had officially acquired the profession of blacksmith. This information will now be displayed in his information window. Here began the life of Zeke the blacksmith that would one day become a legend. Before he could take on a real job, Zeke had to learn the basics of the craft, under the supervision of the head blacksmith, even though Jin had a lot of experience with the game, but not for the tinker class. So everything he had to learn from the beginning. And yet, after a week, he was doing quite well. You could say he had a talent for it, at least he thought he did. His mentor, on the other hand, thought otherwise. The blacksmith saw potential in him, but he was still far from perfect. In order to increase Zik's skill, the blacksmith ordered him to forge 30 short swords of the highest quality. For Zeke's level, making that many high-quality swords in a limited amount of time is very difficult. But difficult doesn't mean impossible. For starters, our hero decided to improve the quality of his products. But time after time, his swords were crooked, blunt, cracked. The strength of such a sword was only enough for a few blows. However, Jin had lost too much to put his hands down over such a small thing. As he thrust out another sword, Zik noticed that the entire blade was covered in some strange blue lines. Examining the previous swords he'd made, Jin saw that they had the same thing on them. And then Zeke decided to look at the swords of the other aspiring blacksmiths. And the other player, it was the same. All the swords were covered in broken blue lines. When suddenly, Zik pointed his sword right in the guy's face and said, Can't you see? Tell me, do you see the blue lines on this blade? To the second guy, in a trembling voice, replied, What are you doing? Get the sword out of my face. And no, I don't see any blue lines. Figuring it didn't mean anything, Zeke decided to put the matter on hold and return to the quest. A blacksmith must know how to fix things. Therefore, the first quest in the profession of a blacksmith was just about that. Our hero must repair five broken axes. When Zik looked at the axe, he saw small chips on the blade and red lines all along the axe. Everything was going well. Suddenly, when he struck again with his hammer, the axe shattered into small splinters, and our hero was notified that the axe repair was a failure. From that moment on, he began to doubt that he had a talent for the craft. But he wasn't going to stop. As he picked up the next axe, he noticed that the direction of the line matched the damage. Our hero, for several days, tried to understand the cause of these mysterious lines and how they were connected with the damage. One fine morning, the blacksmith came into the workshop and shouted, Zeke, you said you do everything quickly, but you've been at it for days. You can't be trusted with anything. How much more time do you need to build short swords? I hope you haven't forgotten about repair training, added the master. However, upon approaching Zeke's workbench, the blacksmith saw dozens of forged short balls of high quality, and next to it, repaired axes. The blacksmith's mouth dropped open in amazement as he examined one of the blades. He said in a trembling voice, Zik, how did you manage to make such perfect swords? It's all about our hero discovering a shocking truth. After days of creating and repairing objects, first, the blue lines. These are the marks of a hammer blow to the metal. The shape depends on the force and the distance between blows and the quality depends on the spaces between the lines. 2. Red lines. These are cracks in the metal structure that result from breakage or failed repairs. In theory, if you use this understanding correctly, you can perfectly repair an item. 
Roughly speaking, it is a cheat that helps to process equipment. I literally didn't sleep for nights. But honestly, it was worth it, because he had an incredible experience and an amazing ability to see the souls of objects. When suddenly the blacksmith shouted with all his might, Zik, I can't believe I'm saying this, but you did a great job. I have nothing more to teach you. When our hero heard this, he was greatly surprised. After all, Kuznetsk, from whom he was trained, was considered one of the best masters of his craft in this city. I got to tell you, Zik, I'm proud of you. Usually guys with no talent like that give up quickly. Suddenly our hero asked, Master, have the blacksmiths before me seen something like lines on objects? The blacksmith's face became sullen at that moment, and he answered, I have no idea what you are talking about. That's pretty funny. There's a high chance that our hero gained this skill through a hidden achievement, and the condition for obtaining it can be a promotion to blacksmith through training from an NPC with no affinity to blacksmithing. Jin had never heard of anything like this before. He might be the only one who had gone through this hardship, which means he's the only one with that ability. At this rate, he could become the greatest blacksmith in a matter of weeks. Hey, Bartz, why do you want to be Odin so badly? And really, why is it that when Jin played for Bartz, he fought and did all the quests alone? This may seem very strange, but Jin was an outcast among his classmates, and even those he considered friends, sooner or later, betrayed him. He learned one lesson from all this. That you can't trust people because of the bullying. Jean had recurring nightmares, which reminded him of the cruelty of people. Loneliness has become his best friend, who will never hurt or betray him! <laughs> How suddenly, during the night shift at the family store, Jeannie got a call from an unknown number. After answering, Jean heard a gentle female voice saying, Good afternoon, Mr. Jean. You are being contacted by customer service. You have recently contacted us about a hacker attack. Overwhelmed with hope, our hero shouted with all his might, Did you really decide to give me my character back after all? Because it's completely against company policy. However, in return, they offer a small compensation for the inconvenience. The company that developed the game suggests that the genie take the latest virtual reality capsule worth $8,000. Naturally, Jin didn't refuse such a tempting offer. Meanwhile, somewhere in the middle of a tropical island, the head of Mad Game was holding a meeting. Med Game is the same company that created the online Arpedia. It was he who gave the genie a new virtual reality capsule. For a man like that, $8,000 was nothing. But he was struck by Gene's devotion to the game, because even after deleting his main account, where he'd spent half his life, he continued to play as the blacksmith that everyone shunned. When all of a sudden, the head of the company said, I did it out of curiosity. I'm curious what he will demonstrate in the next update of the game. Meanwhile, Sia was looking for another member of the team to raid Deborah's dungeon. Finding a trustworthy companion seemed difficult. The archer was even beginning to think they should go on the raid as a part-time group. When suddenly, in the crowd in the town square, she bumped into some guy. And coincidentally, that guy happens to be our Zeke. When Sia saw him, she stopped and shouted, You're the guy that Furious Boar was chasing. It's good to see you again. Wouldn't you like to? The girl added. Before Sia could finish, our hero ran away from her again. But the girl was much faster than Zeke. Sia insisted they needed to talk, realizing he couldn't escape. Zeke stopped and said, Listen to what you want me to do. Smiling, the girl handed our hero a sheet and said, Do you want to join my group in the raid? You haven't been to Deborah's dungeon, have you? They say it's a good place for beginners. Lots of experience and money. Sia added. But to be honest, Jin was the discoverer of this dungeon. Zeke was frankly not the best choice to go on a raid. At least he wasn't a warrior, he was just a blacksmith, but given his combat experience. Going to such a dungeon could be successful, while bringing him a large amount of experience. Even so, Zik decided to opt out. Looking at a nervous Jin Sia said, Don't you think it's funny that we keep bumping into each other? Ours for the first time, once again just ignored Sia's questions. It felt like they had met before. Rumors of Zik's excellence as a blacksmith spread quickly throughout the city, but the players... It wasn't even his skill that bought him the most. It was the price of his services. He could repair any weapon to perfection for only 30 gold coins. Just as Jean thought he would, a huge crowd of players had gathered. But he hadn't expected so many. At one point, he even thought he should raise the price of his services. But if he wanted to find a hacker, he should drop the idea, which he did. After a couple hours, an archer came to the genie and gave him a ranger's bow. It was the only piece of Duranko equipment the Barts had. Could it be that our hero is on the hacker's trail so quickly? That would be good. 
but his bow had a special mark, which this bow didn't have. While repairing this bow, Jin heard an interesting conversation. The black-haired archer was going to give this bow to some girl to get her heart and body. When our hero learned about it, he was very angry. After all, he considered it a humiliation of the girl's dignity. Admittedly, in the game, these two had a very high level and excellent characterization. But in real life, they were clearly not the best people. I felt truly sorry for the girl they were targeting. Anyway, his mission was more important than anything else. Funny thing is, the bows took the longest to repair. Because of their fluid shapes. And their specific working principles. When all of a sudden, one of these men said, I'm gonna drag that Sia all over the room. She's gonna scream like she's never screamed before. And meanwhile, Zik had already finished repairing his bow. But he wasn't about to give it away for nothing. Granted, Zeke and Sia weren't close, but still, Jin taught that idiot a lesson. Being humiliated, the archer grabbed Zeke by the collar and said, What do you want to fight? You're just trash. Apologize now or I'll make you delete the game, added the archer. As suddenly a certain Storm Guilford walked up to Zeke and the archer and said, The fix is done, get out of here. Storm Guilford, leader of one of the strongest mercenary groups, the Red Tigers, also known as Ranker, which ranks 45th on the server among all players. And now he's standing in line to be our hero. He wants to repair his favorite sword, a sword with which he has many fond memories. Guilford has beaten almost every smith in the game, but no one would fix his sword. It was literally falling apart in his hands. Besides Zeke, there was another blacksmith in the world who would take jobs of this complexity, but he charges a lot of money for his services. So you could say our hero is Guilford's last chance to keep his sword. No player in his right mind would go up against a rancher especially in the top 100. Guilford came to our hero and said, This is my favorite sword from when I was a novice. It saved me. Can you fix it? After examining Guilford's sword, Zick said, I can't promise a full recovery, but do what you can. Guilford watched our hero's work with rapt attention. In a matter of minutes, his faithful battle buddy was back to strength. I tried my best to concentrate on Guilford's sword, but he couldn't get the archer's words out of his head. He replayed the moments of every encounter with her over and over again. It was like he'd fallen in love with Sia. Zeke's mind was so clouded by the girl that our hero miscalculated his strength and destroyed Guilford's favorite sword. When he saw the sword dearest to his heart destroyed, Guilford froze with horror. Jean realized he was completely to blame for what had happened. So to avoid Guilford's wrath, he withdrew from the game. But Guilford won't just give up. He has ordered every member of the Blood Tiger Guild to hunt a blacksmith named Zik. Meanwhile, Sia and her two other partners have arrived at the Debor dungeon, according to her partners. The boss in this dungeon was a terrible witch who had plunged the entire kingdom of Barks into chaos 300 years ago. And then the archer who was repairing his bow said, Don't worry, kid. We've been down this dungeon a thousand times, and I only came here for you. When suddenly, from behind a pile of stones, ran out a Zeke all dirty and smelly. Barely breathing, he said, Thank God I made it. Team in Deborah's dungeon. You need another team member, right? Zick added. When she saw our hero, the girl literally blossomed. She said, Ah, you are Mr. Ungrateful Blacksmith. Apparently decided to go on a cleanup mission with us. You came. Thank you. I'm Sia, by the way. My girlfriend. Embarrassed, our hero replied, Nice to meet you, I'm a Zick. Lush, take care of me. Before heading out for the sweep, Sia introduced the members of the group to each other. The vile archer's name was Zerus, and his friend was Alden. They were both very experienced players, with levels reaching around 70th. Zerus recognized our hero at once, but there was no point in quarreling with him now. As suddenly the archer said, As far as I know, blacksmiths don't have combat skills. Are you sure you'll be okay, poor thing? And then everyone intervened and said, Oh, it's okay, he's very strong, I saw it myself. This was the first time Jin had heard any of the players say that the blacksmith was a strong warrior. Sia's team was about to enter the dungeon when suddenly Zeke said, Wow, what a coincidence. These are the same guys I met while fixing the dungeon. Zerus, I'm sorry about what happened the other day. And please take care of me, Zik added. Zerus and Alden decided to leave Zik alone. However, if our hero starts talking too much, they will simply finish him off. For what it's worth, Jean was a pretty smart guy. So he knew exactly what could happen if he acted too lightly. And finally, Sia's squad enters the beginner's dungeon where they are greeted by mobs of weak mobs. Zerus and Alden had no trouble clearing this dungeon with just the two of them. They didn't need Sia at all for that. While they fought, Sia did nothing but scream in admiration. The archer was sure the girl had already fallen in love with his awesome power, but the reason she was admired was not Zerus, but Zik, 
who as an ordinary craftsman, fought on a level with high-level warriors, thanks to the experience he's gained in an infinite number of fights. Our hero learned that the weak point of skeletons is whiskey. Over the years, Gene has learned the weaknesses of every monster he's ever encountered. Of the wooden soldier, the weak point was his source of strength, his heart. After killing a few monsters, Zick was notified that his stamina level had dropped significantly. Luckily, he was prepared for this and took some cookies with him. In the game, any food can increase stamina and health. Seeing the blacksmith kill the monsters with a single blow, Zerus became furious. If before he wanted to be lenient and reach the end of the dungeon together, now he changed his mind. As a cursed skeleton archer suddenly announced from the darkness, all cursed monsters have increased damage and life reserves. Granted, this skeleton was stronger than all the previous ones, but he was still a low-level one. So by using his counter-strike skill, Zerus was able to deflect the poison arrow. Only it reflected the arrow right into our hero's shoulder. Within seconds, Zik felt the poison begin to spread through his body. Of course, Zeros did it on purpose. The thing is that killing other players is strictly forbidden. Due to the rapidly spreading poison, Zeke was temporarily immobilized. Zerus said to his wounded companion, You look like you're in a bad way. Have you run out of strength? What I expected from a tinker. You realize we're not going to wait ten minutes for the paralysis to wear off, Zerus added. Zerus added. Upon hearing this, Sia yelled at Zerus and said that they would wait as long as it took. Before our hero's body was completely petrified, he said, It's okay, I'll stay. And I'll catch up with you after a little break. After all, they can see each other's location. Since they're on the same team. Saya agreed to keep Jin only on one condition, that as soon as he got rid of the paralysis, he would let her know about it. Don't forget that Jin was the pioneer who opened this dungeon. So he was well aware of the monsters he would encounter here, and was prepared for them. In addition to food, our hero also took a few herbs, one of which was a healing potion. After drinking it, Zik felt the effects of the paralysis slowly begin to wear off. That meant it was time to start his main plan. Meanwhile, Zerus, Alden, and Sia were moving deeper into the dungeon. The archer laughed and replied, Don't worry. For our level this item is just cheap. The archer laughed and replied, Don't worry. For our level it's just cheap. Plus, archery isn't my main specialty. So I'm giving this bow to you, Zerus added. When suddenly, there was a loud clang. A small stone struck Alden's staff, knocking it out of his hands. When Alden lost his staff, he fell to his knees in panic and searched for it. It was a staff he had borrowed on credit, which he had not yet repaid. Once again, turning on the lights, they saw before them an entire squad of cursed skeleton warriors. In the few seconds they were without light, the monsters had surrounded them. But worst of all, Sia was gone. But the girl wasn't just missing. She was dragged deep into the dungeon with her. Saya screamed and tried with all her might to break free from the monster's grip. Suddenly, she saw a light that radiated from the small torch in the hands of her captor. Opening her eyes fully, the girl saw that it was Zeke who had kidnapped her. Suddenly he said, Calm down, it's me, you'll be fine. Of course, the girl was glad she hadn't been kidnapped by some monster. But she didn't understand why he'd done it. Seeing Sia's panicked face, Zeke said, Calm down, they'll be fine. You said they're experienced players, and this dungeon is designed for players of around level 45, so they should be fine. Let's go. Meanwhile, Zeros and Alden barely fought off a mob of monsters. When suddenly nearby, Zerus discovered a whole set of items, medium rare. Them. It didn't even bother them that such items simply couldn't fall out of monsters as weak as a damn skeleton. Of course, seeing all these things, they didn't ask too many questions. After all, a complete set of medium rarity costs a lot of money. When suddenly, out of the darkness came a rough male voice. It said, I can't believe you've decided to take all your stuff for yourself. Is this you, Alden and Zerus, from the forum, a pathetic lowlife? Zerus replied, Why is a low-level lowlife talking to me like that? But when they turned around, they saw Wang Chul Su in front of them. Not the strongest player on the server, but he could defeat them single-handedly. Zerus and Alden were known on the forum for bullying girls in the game. They convinced some people to meet them in real life, but no one knew what happened in those meetings. But after that, the girl never logged into the game again so it's hardly a good thing. The problem was that others couldn't do anything, as contacting their victims in-game was impossible. So Gene decided he had to get this garbage out of the game for good. The plan was quite simple, especially for a genie who knew all the nuances of Deborah's dungeon. Of course, in order to make a lure of medium rarity items, our hero had to rob other players. 
sometimes to destroy great evil. We must do bad things ourselves. It's a very popular tactic of the past that everyone hated. If Zeke make it look like Alden and Zerus attacked that group, then he'll eliminate them both with the help of another man's hands. That's very clever. What you do is, if you can't figure something out yourself, make someone else do it. Thanks to Zeke's dastardly but necessary plan, they'll be forced to leave the game for good. A few minutes later, Sia received a notification that Zerus and Alden had left the game. When she saw that, the girl asked in surprise, Zik, those two are out of the game. Do you think they were killed? Our hero just smiled and replied, No, don't think so. They wrote in private messages that they had urgent business to attend to. Without Zerus and Alden, it's too dangerous to continue raiding this dungeon. Well, in this dungeon, Zik has achieved his goal. It's time to get back to forging. When suddenly, wandering through the dungeon, they came upon a gate leading to the boss's lair. And that's when Sia said, It's a shame, of course. I wanted to clear this dungeon because I can't play anymore. Zik was surprised to hear that. He thought she had a lot ahead of her. Suddenly he said, Wait a minute. I realize this may sound strange, but since we've already found the boss room, maybe we should try to clean it up, added Zik. Sia was surprised to hear that. Zeke had been the one who talked her out of the cleanup in the first place. The thing is, since Sia was about to leave the game, Jin wanted to give her an unforgettable memory of the raid together. When suddenly the girl yelled, Hey Zeke, what are you standing there for? Let's hurry up and finish this boss. If our hero does not manage to enter the lair of the boss before the doors close, Sia will have to fight the monster alone, and Zik would have been out the door. The fact that they've decided to defeat the boss is quite brave, but will two players be enough to do it? Especially since one of them is an artisan. Here is not the boss is about on the same level as the stone golem, so their selves may well be enough, especially since Zeke knows this dungeon like the back of his hand. After all, when he was still a bars, he had cleared Deborah's dungeon hundreds of times. He couldn't make a mistake even if he wanted to. No matter how you look at it, clearing out this dungeon is a good idea. The Sia will have good memories before they leave, and our hero will be able to level up. When all of a sudden, Zik said, You can relax for now. The boss hasn't shown up yet. As he sat down on the floor, Zik heard an unpleasant squeal. He turned around and saw that he had crushed a hamster. When she saw the little rodent, Sia said, Oh my god, is that a monster too? He's so cute. Technically, all living creatures that were in the dungeons other than the players were monsters. But this is just an ordinary hamster that poses no threat. The only thing was that this rodent was best friends with the stone golem, the boss of this dungeon. Which means that if he's here, the golem isn't far away. Suddenly, there was a terrible roar throughout the entire dungeon. The stones around our heroes seemed to come to life. The awakening of the stone golem has begun. This is the first time, in the history of raids, that a stone golem has appeared right under the players. After all, it usually appears at the other end of the cave. After a few moments, the golem was fully awakened. It was a level 60 monster, created by the mage Deborah himself, to protect the dungeon. Sia asked in a trembling voice after seeing the golem in person, I don't doubt you, but are you sure we can do this? Zik smiled and replied in a calm voice, Of course, we can defeat him if we follow the strategy. Because Sia was an archer, she could only attack from a distance. So our hero will have to fulfill the role of a tank and a damage dealer at the same time. But honestly, Zeke's attacks were completely harmless to Golem, which is not the case with Sia's attacks. Even though the Golem was made entirely of her arrow stone, feeling threatened by the girl, Golem decided to focus all his blows on her. Seeing this, Zik decided to help her. He knew he couldn't do much damage to the monster, but our hero was relying on his combat experience. One of the stone Golem's weaknesses was its legs. That's where Zeke aimed his attacks. But by attacking the Golem, Something happened that our hero could not have predicted. He took damage instead of the monster. But at least he was able to distract the boss from Sia. Because apparently she's the only one who can kill the monster. Well, all Zik has to do is dodge his attacks. The only way Zik can defeat the golem is if he can get on top of the golem's head and attack its most vulnerable spot. But with those characteristics, it's not going to be easy. Especially since my dexterity is running low. And then, our hero notices an arrow sticking out of the golem's shoulder, and an ingenious idea comes to him. But one arrow, too few for the Zeke to climb. Suddenly, he shouted, Everyone, shoot the golem's joints from afar! After complying with Zeke's request, the girl made a makeshift ladder, which will lead our hero straight to the monster's head by drinking the acceleration potion. 
Zeke raised all of his agility-related stats several times, but only for half a minute. But it's more than enough to get on top of the golem's head. Like most golems, the stone golem's weak point is the core, which, for some reason, the developers put right on top of his head. This is probably the first time in the history of the game that a blacksmith was able to defeat such a powerful monster. After damaging its core, it was as if the golem had gone insane. He couldn't stop screaming, and his entire body was covered in red lightning. Seeing the golem in agony, Zick said, Well, we've won. I wonder if they added a new death animation for him. It looks pretty cool. As suddenly, Ziku and Sia received a notice. The boss has gone into mode. A raging giant stone golem is a condition that occurs when the golem's core is damaged. It can no longer be controlled, and its attack power and speed are increased. If before, they didn't have much of a chance to win. Now their chances are nil. As an experienced warrior who had passed this dungeon hundreds of times, Jin couldn't believe it all. He took this dungeon too lightly, because he cleaned it with his eyes closed. But what's the reason? Before, after damaging a hole, the golem would die immediately, without a second phase appearing. I think I've got it all figured out. Being a Great Bars warrior, Jin didn't just damage the core, but completely destroyed it with a single blow. That was why he had never seen a golem in this mode. It seems it's time for our hero to get used to the fact that he's no longer the great warrior of legend. Being completely shattered, Zeke was ready to give up and die at the hands of the monster as suddenly there was a massive explosion. Our hero had no time to realize anything before Sia grabbed him by the arm and shouted, Here! Quick! You and I have too few health points. Let's hide and recover. Run faster! While you were distracting the golem, I checked the exit. It's locked and won't open. What do we do? Sia added. Seeing the confused face of our hero, the girl grabbed him and shouted, Come to his senses. To get out first, you have to deal with the boss. Even in such moments, she still believes in victory. Sighing heavily, Zick whispered, We will not win. This is the first time I've ever seen this. It's some sort of hidden pattern that opens up under very specific conditions. We could overwhelm it with damage or determine an attack strategy, but the level is too low. As unfortunate as it may sound, Zick is right. Now is the best way for them to die with the least amount of pain, but Sia didn't think so. The girl thought that since defeat was inevitable, it would be better to try to fight to the end. Even in a seemingly hopeless situation, she remained unprecedentedly optimistic. Suddenly, she said, Why are you sad? I have 42nd level, you have 38th. Together, you're 80th. If we work together as a team and give our best, we can get out of here alive, Sia added. But there was some truth in what the girl said. If they're going to be defeated anyway, why not make it beautiful? Sia unleashed a barrage of her most powerful attacks on the golem. She even managed to remove 10% of the monster's health. But because of that, the girl was left without a single drop of energy and mana. But apparently, that was her limit. At least she'll leave the game knowing she did her best. It's a shame it ended like that. The golem crushed the poor girl like an ant. Although, wait, where is she? Did she leave the game before Golem killed her? But that can't be, because you can't leave Spawn right in the middle of a battle. So here's the thing, Zeke pushed the girl away, just seconds before she was about to die. Rising to his feet, Zeke said, Thanks for buying some time. I've regained health points and stamina. You're right, we're gonna die anyway, so let's at least put up a fight. All or nothing, added Zeke. Because the Golem destroyed our hero's sword, he'll have to fight with a pickaxe. Still, it's better than bare knuckle fighting. Fending off the golem's attack, Zeke heard a painfully familiar sound. It was the same one he'd heard in the mine when he was mining coal for the blacksmith. Who would have thought that with the most ordinary pickaxe, you could injure a high-level stone golem so badly? It turns out the weakness of this boss was a simple pickaxe, but it doesn't have an attack power indicator in the system. Then how could this have happened? All of which raised too many questions for our hero to answer right now. He continued to attack the golem with the pickaxe, but this time, Without success, you'd think it was a bug. If no missed messages would appear, it's definitely built into the game. But then, what are the conditions of use? Zick suddenly saw that the golem's arm was covered in blue lines just like the swords it forged. And then he remembered his mentor's words. Ore is a combination of different materials. Even though it becomes one under high pressure, there are gaps between the different materials, which only a professional can see. Well... If you get right into those cuts, you can get something incredible. Who would have thought that an ordinary crafting skill could be useful in the fight against a golem? I didn't even have to make any effort. The golem did all the work. 
All our hero had to do was to get in the line. Shattering the golem's body into thousands of small stones, Zik shouted. Who would have thought that your weak point was prey? When the boss was defeated, Zik was notified that the mining was successfully completed. As a reward, he received ten units of marble. What just happened can completely change the entire game world. After all, previously, no one even thought that destroy the boss can be crafting skills. All this time, Sia had been watching from the sidelines. The girl's voice trembled with excitement and she said, This is incredible! When suddenly our heroes are notified that they have defeated a raging giant golem. It turns out that the ability to see lines is also suitable for mining ore. It's strange because when Zeke tried to concentrate and see them before, it didn't work. But it doesn't matter now because he defeated the golem, albeit not alone. As suddenly all of Sia rushed at Zik and shouted, You're incredible! How did you defeat the boss with a production skill? Tell me everything you know about it, and I promise to stay in the game, Sia added. When suddenly, our heroes woke up in some strange room. More like a production hall of some factory. It was a shock to Sia, but the genie was familiar with the place. Because after defeating a boss, players always go to the reward room. After looking around, Zik said, I've been in many different rooms, but I've never been in a room like this. Sia's attention was drawn to a conveyor belt nearby, which appeared to be making wooden soldiers. The reward rooms look different for each dungeon, but for the same dungeon, the reward room is always the same. Our heroes may have entered Deborah's secret laboratory, but no one has ever been here before. Perhaps they were thrown here because of the victory over the fierce golem, when suddenly Sia shouted, Zeke, come here! There are huge chests! You hear me? Come here! The first chest was opened by a girl. In it, she found protective goggles called Eagle Eyes. Thanks to them, accuracy increases by 20%, range by 30. It was an artifact created by a witch of this world. But his wife, not so lucky. He got the witch's gloves out of the trunk, which add three points to your defense and magic power. But in addition to the gloves, the chest also contained one of the two guardian blueprints. By collecting the missing blueprint, Zik would be able to create the black iron that Deborah was trying to develop. In the history of the game, there have been a few players who have had such assistance. Find the blueprints are not so difficult. The hardest thing to do is to raise money for a blacksmith who will make it. After all, one such robot costs approximately $250,000. But a Ziku doesn't need to spend money on a blacksmith. He can create it himself, but first he needs to raise his level to 500th. And the last item Zeke found was the hero's manual of Carvin. Carwin is the hero who defeated the evil wizard Deborah. If this guide is read by a blacksmith, he will gain the skills to understand the structure and destruction of weapons. To get the structure understanding skill, the blacksmith had to have the worst affinity for blacksmithing and complete the quest in the Rankwell dungeon. And for the weapon destruction skill, the blacksmith must defeat a fierce giant stone golem. And all of these conditions our hero has already met. Defeating a witch golem is no easy task especially over a giant stone one. The book said the following. My name is Carwin. I once heard from a blacksmith that all ores are made of different materials, so you can always find a gap between them. Those words allowed me to destroy the stone golem. After the victory, I gained the ability to see the boundaries of all materials. I developed a skill that allows me to take this ability to the next level, a skill I called structural understanding. The more I developed it, the easier it was to mine ore and break equipment. So I learned the second skill weapon destruction. Reading the hero's writings, Zeke couldn't believe it. For it turns out that Carwen wasn't just a great warrior. He was a great warrior blacksmith. But most of all, our hero was alarmed by the last page. On which Carwen had written that the witch would return with a huge army. Two things became clear from the book. First, the battle with the witch is not over yet. And second, the Carven hero skill can only be learned by a blacksmith. Well, everyone got their reward. It was time to head back to town. After leaving the dungeon, Sia said, God, I feel like I haven't seen the sky in a year. But it's not surprising because they spent an entire game day killing a boss that would take eight hours in the real world. When suddenly Sia said, I know we have to say goodbye, but tell me how old you are. Zeke replied in a shaky voice, I'm 20. Why? The girl smiled and held out her hand and said, We're about the same age as you. I don't want to be intrusive. But I've enjoyed talking to you. Would you like to be my friend? But for a while, Zik froze and stood as still as a statue. It was the first time anyone had ever wanted to be his friend. As they shook hands, Jean felt something he had never felt before in his life. He felt warm and cozy on his soul. And then, Sia laughed loudly and said, 
See, it's not that scary, just a girl by the hand. I have midterm exams starting, so I'll be back in two weeks. But we can contact you on Messenger. Funny. Now I know what she meant when she said she wouldn't play anymore. As in a friend, Sia slapped Jin on the back of his head and shouted, T Don't be so sad! If anyone saw us, they'd think we were saying goodbye forever. Two weeks will go by quickly, added the girl. Oops, looks like Sia overdid it. She accidentally killed Zeke. Now she'll be branded a player killer. But Jin wasn't mad at her. Well, reading the situation is pretty funny. The only thing he asked for was his items. But the girl was in a real panic. Because now her nickname was Glowing Red. Everyone would know she was a murderer. But Jin calmed her down and said it was only temporary. It's been a full week since the hunt for the stone golem. Gina. The new capsule had even arrived. All this week, he's been practicing his new skill, understanding structure. Thanks to this, the skill of creating and repairing items has a 100% chance of success. Yes, and the quality of the items he created was quite impressive. In just a week of uninterrupted work, he became Bolden's renowned master. And thanks to the new virtual reality capsule, everything around me felt even more real. Rumors that Zick is an incredibly good blacksmith who repairs items at the lowest price in the entire game spread quickly. The queues of players wanting to repair their items from him were literally kilometers long. As suddenly, out of the whole crowd, someone said, What? The Slime King has appeared on the Plain Orc. We must go there quickly. Upon hearing this, all players immediately ran towards the Orc Plains. After all, the Slime King is one of the rarest mobs in the game. He heard it too. But unlike the other players, he knew that the Slime King couldn't have appeared on the Orc Plain. And then a man dressed in incredibly expensive clothes came up to our hero. And he said, We meet at last, Mr. Zick. I came here to hire you. It's been a whole month since the Bart's break-in. I think we can summarize a little bit. Zeke became a good blacksmith, got some, but never found any trace of the culprit. Most of the equipment was high quality, so he should still raise his character level. And our hero started looking for a way to do it quickly and safely. For this, he chose the quest trade route, No Sark. If it ends successfully and the trade route stabilizes, big changes will come to Arpedia that will lead to an update of the game. And Jean can't miss out on that kind of fun. A quest from the King of Barkas was recently announced, in which to travel with a delegation along a new trade route to the land of the dwarves, Nosarg. The quest was submitted by the king himself. So many expect the amount of experience and rewards to be high. Nosark, the land of the smith race, the dwarves. Zik just can't pass up an opportunity like this. The problem is that our hero's reputation level is too low. If he applies, he's guaranteed to fail. Back to Arpedia. This guy's name is Dylan. He's the head of the Bolden branch of the Gold Rush Trade Association. And he came here to invite the man who became known as the Bolden Mending King into the guild. When suddenly Dylan said cat's eye, chamomile leaf, lentil soup. Holy crap! You're not even listening to me! To which Jean replied, God, I'm not interested in guilds, don't waste your time. When Dylan heard that, he laughed and said, Apparently Mr. Zeke doesn't know about the Gold Rush. No! With complete indifference in his voice, Zick said, You are a trade guild that is always in second place. Dylan's veins swelled up in his face at the insolence. But still, he kept his cool. Mr. Zeke, even second place is an incredibly high position. Especially since we'll be moving up to number one in no time. And with your help, we'll do it much faster, Dylan added. After listening to Dylan, Zick was still very adamant about his decision. He wasn't going to join the guild under any circumstances. Picking his nose, Zeke walked closer to Dylan and said, Obviously, how will you behave with a regular blacksmith? I won't even be able to participate in a group hunt. You will have me as a common slave. Well, Zeke had a point. After all, there were quite a few such guilds. But Dylan assured him that they weren't one of those, and offered him a position as a partner. And this? The offer has already seriously interested our hero. After all, usually the partnership offers only high-level players. Ziku doesn't have to do anything special. All he has to do is register on the guild's website. Dilam will become his personal manager. It will be enough to contact him from time to time. If they become partners, they have no obligations to each other as full members of the guild. The guild will pay with money or information to create and repair equipment. Zik eventually agreed to join the guild, but on one condition. Back to his fortress, guild master wrote to Dilan. Partnership? Aren't the terms too good for a rookie blacksmith? You're confident in your premonition. But it wasn't a premonition. It was experience that spoke in Dylan at that moment. 
He had seen a low-level player once before, who had surprised everyone. We're talking about Jirion, the greatest master whose pieces sell for at least 10 million. Remember, before agreeing, Zick asked Dylan for a favor. So instead of seed money, he asked me to sign him up for an expedition. I've been planning this from the beginning, ever since I found out about the King's Quest. He knew he could never get there on his own. But with the help of one of the best guilds in the game, he could. Now that Zeke has been officially approved for this expedition, it was time to prepare for it. To do so, our hero visited Joe's bakery. Remember Stormy Guilford, leader of one of the Red Tiger's strongest mercenary groups. So, right now, he's standing in line for Joe's amazing buns just like the rest of the players. He patiently, patiently stood in line for hours for them. But the player in front of him took everything on the counter. And who do you think was the player who took all the baked goods? Of course it was our Zeke. As he approached the genie, Guilford's face reddened with anger and he shouted, Fuck! You're the blacksmith again! Zick, embarrassed, replied, Don't get me wrong, but who are you? The usual anger was replaced by genuine rage. Gritting his teeth, Guilford said, Are you kidding me? You destroyed my precious sword. It seems Zeke has just made his relationship with the Red Tigers Guild even worse. When suddenly, for some unknown reason, Guilford was out of the game. And the reason, quite simply. The wife, Guilford disconnected the virtual reality capsule from the power source. Is in the game, he's a top-tier player and guild leader. In real life, he's just a loser. His wife was a very tough woman. And if she didn't like something, she wasn't shy about using her fists. In addition to his wife, he also had a grown daughter who was in university. But nevertheless, Guilford arrived in time for the start of the quest. But today, in addition to the quest, the Red Tigers will also be hunting our hero. Zick had already, painfully badly, messed up Guilford. First his favorite sword and then his favorite pastries. Before starting the mission, Jin walked around and examined the items of the local peddlers, hoping to find at least one worthwhile item. But there was only garbage on the shelves, at a higher price. But what caught our hero's attention was a magical teleportation ring, which cost only 10,000 gold coins. For such an item, the price was more than reasonable. But for a novice blacksmith, 10,000 was a lot of money. And yet Zick still decided to buy it. There's no telling what lies ahead. Even if he doesn't use it, he can resell it and even make money. When suddenly Zick sensed something was wrong. When he opened the characteristics of the ring, he saw that it only carried the user 20 meters. And it takes four seconds for the ring to do that, and then it self-destructs. And he realized he'd been tricked. So he decided to go to the merchant and sort it all out. Coming to her, our hero shouted, You cheat! How dare you sell this piece of iron for such a price? The girl laughed and told your daughter what's the problem. It's a teleportation ring, that's right. By the way, this girl's name was Lizzie, and she's not technically a crook. A furious argument, Zeke and Lizzie caught the attention of the local guards. Seeing the soldier, Lizzie immediately hid behind him and began to accuse the genie of attacking her. Hearing this, the Zeke said, Mr. Soldier, it's a girl scammer. She sold me an item that did not match the description and price. After listening to both soldiers, the soldier was very doubtful. But the bag of money he received from Lysia put all doubts aside in an instant. As suddenly the soldier thrust his spear at our hero and shouted, You wretched criminal! How dare you slander an innocent lady! Apologize to her quickly, and you'll pull her cart as punishment. Otherwise, I'll expel you from the expedition. How can this be? Why can't just one time go smoothly? But anyway, Zick had to get on this expedition at all costs. So now he would have to pull Lizzie's cart all the time. A few minutes later, the expedition began, and thousands of players began their journey. This expedition could make Barxa's kingdom the most powerful in all of Arpedia. But Barxa is not the only kingdom in the game that wants to gain dominance. But there's not enough power or resources to stop an expedition by another kingdom. Although there is one kingdom that may well resist. And it's a Broden kingdom. Half of their entire income comes from brokering trade. So if Bark's expedition is successful, the Broden country will lose money and power. But since the two sides were allies, they could not oppose each other openly. And for such occasions, there were assassins in the Arpedia. Assassins are warriors in the dark. They never make the news, nor are they interested in playful quests. But if someone needs to do something illegal, assassins are always happy to come to the rescue. Carvin marched all day without stopping, and it was only at midnight that they decided to stop. And all the while, Zeke was dragging a huge cart of Lizzie's behind him. As suddenly the girl said, Hey, slave, I need to go out for a while. Set up the tent and prepare the food. Got it. With the last of his strength, Zeke managed to get up off the floor, and in a hoarse voice replied, Seriously? 
You've gone too far. Are you trying to make a slave out of me? I will no longer obey any of your orders. On hearing this, Lizzie began to laugh heartily. Leaning over to our hero, she whispered, Are you sure? Suddenly the girl shouted with all her might, Guards! As unfortunate as it may be, Zick must accept that for the duration of this expedition he has become Lizzie's slave. If it wasn't for the quest, our hero would have sent the peddler away in the beginning. After pitching the tent, building a fire, and cooking dinner, Zick was finally able to rest and be alone with his thoughts. But his solitude was interrupted by a sword falling to the floor, and a voice from the darkness said, Hey, blacksmith, I've heard you're the best at fixing things. Repair my sword, and perhaps you can live to see the dawn, added the stranger. Judging from their shawls and equipment, Zick knew at once that they were from the Red Tigers. With a mouthful of food and a blank stare, Zeke stared at the mercenaries. Surprisingly, even the Red Tigers have heard rumors that Zeke is the king of fixing things. But they didn't come here to fix things. Our hero knew it all too well, but he pretended not to know. And then, Jin decided to repair this mercenary's sword, hoping they'd leave him alone. After a few minutes, Zick returned the mercenary's twilight dagger with a full safety margin. The Red Tiger were genuinely delighted at such skill. After all, they had heard that Zick had broken the commander's marker earlier. Handing the sword back to the mercenary, Jin said, I've already done what you wanted, maybe at Auntie's. I'm trying to read here old timers. The mercenary went berserk when he heard that. His face flushed red, and veins protruded all over his face with anger. And then he shouted, How dare you talk like that after you broke the commander's weapon? And I'm not an old man. We're almost the same age. Because of the mercenary's hysterics, Zick had to stop reading. Looking straight into the Red Tiger's face, our hero said, I remember you. We met at the bakery. Are you acting like this because I took all the cookies? I don't know if this is all part of the plan, or if Zeke's really crazy. A group of professional mercenaries, of course. Beaten and captured the rookie blacksmith without much trouble. Well, at least now Zico doesn't have to put up with Lizzie's bullying. Red Tigers. Very hard hit our hero on the head, because of which he lost consciousness. And when he woke up, he saw in front of him Stormy Guilford. I doubt getting beaten and tied up in a mercenary camp was part of the plan. Guilford came closer, almost right up to me, leaned in and said, Hey, punk, I can spare you if you apologize right now. Zick laughed and replied, I stood in line and then bought everything with my own money. What apology? Piss off. But Guilford wasn't talking about cookies. I can't believe this is all about some old sword. And then Zick said, Look, I don't know what you want from me, but I haven't hurt anyone in this game. Guilford hears this. He orders Zeke's release because he wants to teach him a lesson. As soon as the ropes were loosened and our hero was free, Guilford attacked him. This guy's in some kind of trouble. The explosion was tremendous, but the strange thing is, it only took away one health point from Zick. Only one weapon in all of Arpedia is capable of this, the eventual love stick. The love stick was often used for torture, for the pain was felt, but no damage was done. With a wave of his stick, Guilford said, I'll have to teach you some manners. Let's start the discipline lesson. Hitting the ground with the stick, Guilford caused a huge explosion that tore out all the trees within a hundred meter radius. Even though Guilford was holding back his strength, it was enough for Zeke. The difference in their levels is too great. Seeing this, the Red Tiger promised that he would let Zeke go if he could touch him. For our hero, it was the only chance to get out of this mess alive. Pulling his only sword out of his inventory, Zeke said, You're putting conditions on me? You think you'll never be beaten by a low-level blacksmith? Everyone and everyone looks down on me, like I'm some kind of trash, Zick added. He knew full well that he could never fully defeat Guilford. But if he could at least wound him, that would be enough. In a battle against such a powerful enemy, a Zick can only rely on his combat experience. When their blades made contact, even Guilford sensed that our hero had a talent for the martial arts. However, the Red Tiger was sure that one talent would not be enough you to overcome the huge difference in strength and level. But Zick is not used to giving up in the face of adversity, especially after he was able to defeat the stone golem, especially since he had a trump card up his sleeve, one that could only be accessed. Here it is. Weapon Destruction Skill. A skill that helps you find breaches in weapons or ore to destroy them. One of the conditions for mastering this skill was to pump the characteristics of understanding the structure to the seventh level. And today, as he repaired the sword of one of the Red Tigers, his understanding of the structure grew to the right level. Because of this, Zeke was able to shatter Guilford's love stick. Even though Guilford is a ranker, but it was obvious from his face that this was the first time he was seeing such a skill. From all of this, 
Guilford was so confused he couldn't even move, which Zeke took advantage of. Oh crap. Zick didn't calculate the height of his jump and knocked the red tiger off his feet. Dropping to the ground, Zick fell right on top of Guilford, and their lips came in contact in a passionate kiss. This is a turn of events no one expected. But still, Zeke was able to touch Guilford, so he'll let him go. Of course Guilford was a man of honor and used to keep his promises. But after the kiss, it's unlikely he'd let Zick live. For our hero, it was the first kiss in his life. Of course not how he imagined it, but nothing can change. Suddenly, one of the mercenaries came up to Zeke and said, Hey, you're not bad, kid. Here's a present. Who would have thought that an ordinary blacksmith would be able to defeat Storm Guilford? What kind of skill was that? The mercenary added. The Red Tiger gave Ziku a large potion of restoration. And then our hero said, I'm sorry, but I can't give any details. This gift, the Red Tiger gave to Zeke, not to learn about his skill, but to invite him to their guild. After drinking the potion, Zeke laughed and said, Really? You just beat me up five minutes ago. You can't argue with that. The Red Tigers have been very immature, as the mercenary suddenly said. But you understand we couldn't post otherwise. You broke the commander's favorite sword. So much had happened recently that Zeke had forgotten that he had actually broken Guilford's sword at the very beginning of his journey. But now, none of that matters. Now the Red Tigers and Zeke were friends. Before heading back to his camp, Zeke said, Hey, Guilford, sorry about the kiss and the sword. During an expedition, Many players face several challenges. One of the biggest is replenishing energy. In the Arpedia, you have to eat to replenish your energy stores. And on an expedition, it's hard to cook something tasty. Some people, they're okay with it. And some found a way to make money, like Lizzie. Seeing the common players eating unleavened porridge, Lizzie offered them something incredible. The girl offered the people a golden apple. One such apple would be enough to replenish energy reserves from zero to a hundred. And in order to get more buyers, Lizzie lowered the price from 10,000 to 1,000. From the traveler's camp alone, the girl was able to earn over 20,000 gold coins. Of course, they were all plain apples painted gold, which Zick had made at Lizzie's behest. He didn't want to do it, but he had no other choice. Suddenly the girl said, You're too young to understand. Everything in this world moves because of money. But luckily, Lizzie promised she'd let Zeke go as soon as he finished painting the remaining apples. While doing it, our hero had a lot of time to think, no matter how hard he tried. He still couldn't figure out why Lizzie was so obsessed with money. The next few hours passed uneventfully. Suddenly, Zeke was attacked by someone. Thanks to his combat experience, our hero was able to react in time and block the attack with an apple. When our hero looked closer, he saw that he was attacked with a kunai. But our hero wasn't the only one to suffer such an attack. Literally in every camp of the expedition, there was a similar situation. Not many people know, but only the assassin class used the kunai as their primary weapon. The Red Tigers were also attacked by assassins. Guilford even managed to kill one of them. Just because you saw an assassin die doesn't mean you won. Being, uh, killers of the night. They possessed a unique death effect skill. This skill allows you to create an illusion in which normal players see the death of the assassin, while the real assassin waits for the right moment to kill you quietly. Not many players knew about this assassin skill. Even an experienced warrior like Guilford didn't know about it. But Jin did. Upon seeing the kunai, our hero immediately realized that the entire expedition was in danger because of the assassins. So he went to the Red Tiger's camp to help them. Upon seeing Zeke, Guilford said, An attack like that wouldn't leave a scratch. Perhaps the Wild One lacks a measure of strength. But here was Guilford, not even sensing that the assassin was behind him. Suddenly, one of the assassins appeared in the middle of the camp threatening Guilford with his sword, ordered him to surrender. Well, Assassin just smiled back and said, I guess you don't know who I am. I, the best of all Assassins, the man who leads the Black Crescent Moon. The Black Crescent Moon is the most powerful Assassin's Guild in the world. Its members are legendary, and everyone knows their names. But no one knows what they look like. And beforehand, the Black Crescent Moon was known as Kira, Son of the Night. Kira was also known as one of the Rankers. He independently invented the assassin's fighting stance, which has no vulnerable areas given their fighting style. When suddenly Kira said, Calm down, I didn't come here to kill. I wasn't paid to do that. My goal is to apprehend you and take the title of Patriot in the Shadows. If you voluntarily lay down your arms, I promise to keep everyone alive. When suddenly, someone in the crowd yelled, You're out of your mind! Do you have any idea how much I spent on this quest? Who's gonna give me my money back? Even the butterfly did not have time to flap its wings. But after these words, an arrow flew into the neck of this poor guy. 
And then Kira started laughing like a madman and said, You fools! This is not a negotiation. It's a mere formality. It is not difficult for me to kill you. In case anyone hasn't realized, you're surrounded by hundreds of my followers. If you misbehave, we will kill you all. Assassin added. Guilford sensed the presence of assassins in the forest, but no more than a dozen. It was more likely that Kira was just bluffing. If you fight with them, there is a chance to win. But if at least one NPC dies, there will be big problems. Guilford decided to provoke him in distraction. And to keep the assassins from the forest from seeing it, he wants to use the magic of one of his subordinates. Making sure the mage understood Guilford's intent, he began the countdown. When suddenly, Zeke came in and said, Really? You're the best assassin I've ever seen. You're just a petty thief. Our hero's intervention caused the Gofort to put his plan on hold. What kind of assassin exposes himself and lectures the victims? You should have killed everyone before we saw you. And if you think you're a ranker, fight the good fight, one on one. You surround yourself with followers and you're going to win with crosses, added Zik. First Kira was an assassin, then he was an assassin. Money makes monsters out of people. As suddenly Kira said, For such insolence my boys will take your life. Zeke expected this and was able to fend off the attack, as in the same second, hundreds of arrows and kunai flew at our heroes from the dense forest. Guilford shouted, Now, Hyung! Thanks to the ice wall spell, Max was able to deflect all the arrows and kunai that flew at them. When Kira saw this, he screamed, You have left me no other choice. Kill them all! Now it's time for the Guilford plan. So far the other assassins have seen nothing. The Red Tiger wants to kill the new assassin. And for this, he activates his skill, thanks to which he was nicknamed Storm Guilford. While in Berserk mode, all of the owner's stats increase by several times. Everything but the power. Strength increases tenfold. Also, no player has ever survived a direct hit from his strike in Berserk mode. Assassins have the best disguise of any class in the game, but their health reserves are quite poor. Therefore, Kira can only dodge Guilford's attacks. But how the Red Tiger didn't hit the assassin in Berserk mode is a mystery. After all, he's superior in every way. And then, Kira laughed and said, What an honor. But you lacked a little speed, you fool. When suddenly, Guilford felt his body begin to stiffen. And that's when he got the notification that all stats were downgraded. And the Berserk mode was cancelled. Because his body was poisoned with Hydra blood. But it wasn't just the Red Tiger that was attacked by the Hydra blood. Zeke also felt its effects. At first glance, it may seem that Hydra blood is a skill. But this is a mistake. It is an item that falls from the Hydra, the boss of the dungeon of Kadria. Hydra blood. This is a powerful poison that instantly lowers health and all stats. Zeke started to remember the whole day from this morning, and suspected he might have been poisoned during breakfast. But that was strange, because he thought the food was delicious. But now was not the best time to think about it. Now, it was all about surviving. Meanwhile, Guilford was single-handedly fighting off a dozen assassins, including their tentative Kira. As he fought, Kira realized how strong Guilford was. Assassin had never seen the likes of him before. Because even under the influence of Hydra blood, he can still stand up to an entire squad of high-level assassins on equal footing. But even though things were looking pretty good, <laughs> Guilford decided to back off. <laughs> after all, <laughs> he's at a disadvantage. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zick was trying his best to get away from a couple of mercenaries. But it wasn't long before it became clear he couldn't run for long. He would be caught, and the only way to escape was to hide from them. And where better to hide than in the woods? That's exactly what Zick thought. In a matter of minutes, the Black Crescent killed and looted an entire camp of players. But their work wasn't over yet. Suddenly Kira said, Black Crescent Moon, prepare to move out. We will immediately chase after it when the reconnaissance team returns. Looking around the player base they had robbed, Kira heard a sound coming from the bushes nearby. The cause of this noise was Lizzie, who had been watching from the sidelines the whole time. Kira wanted to know what had created the noise. Suddenly, one of his subordinates ran up to him and said, Master, the recon team has returned. Just as we thought, he headed for Rocking Bridge Canyon. In one fell swoop, Kira cut down a whole bunch of trees to be on the safe side. When Kira heard that the Zeke was heading for the canyon, he shouted, Black Crescent, let's move out. We'll get there first and attack. It's amazing how dedicated the assassins of the Black Crescent are to their gel master. Among assassins, such loyalty can only be earned by force. Lizzie, this time managed to escape. Seeing the number of bodies and belongings, the girl realized that more than half of the expedition group had been killed. If she gets ambushed again, it's game over for her. As suddenly, on one of the trails, 
Lizzie encountered a huge orc, playing a saleswoman. Lizzie simply has no defense and damage stats. In other words, she can't fight even the simplest of mobs. In real life, Lizzie's name was, uh, Min. She even took piano lessons. Once, she even dreamed of becoming a famous musician. She worked hard to pay for her studies. Until one day, the very phone call that turned minds into the money-grubbing Lizzie. The thing is, her teaching father got seriously ill. In order for him to live at least a little longer, Min spent all the money she had saved for her studies. Since then, the girl's life has been turned upside down, and the dream of a university of arts remained a dream. That's why Lizzie became the way she is. They say that money can't make a person happy, but it can help you become happy. The girl had spent an enormous amount of money to get on this expedition, and she wasn't going to give up just like that. Well, like I said, she can't fight monsters. It's simply not in the game. Lizzie was about to die. Suddenly, for some unknown reason, the orc died. But the reason was very simple. He was killed by a zik. Without realizing it, our hero saved his abuser. Let's go back a half hour. When Zik first ran into the woods, he knew very well that even in the woods, it would be very difficult for him to hide from the assassins. They are professional assassins who can see a fly in the night. Well, just in case. Before the expedition began, Zik created a shield to mimic a tree pole. Normally, assassins would be suspicious. But not in the forest, where the trees are in the thousands, after the Zik had broken away from the assassin. He wanted to find a strong antidote to reverse the effects of the Hydra's blood. But wandering through the woods, he found nothing. But they found him. A huge yellow orc. Yellow orc. This is an extremely rare mob that only appears near the Nemesis Mountains. He has a very high attack as for his level, so usually players avoid fighting him. However, Zeke is an unusual player, especially since there's a big antidote coming out of the orc, albeit a lesson and a strong one. But far from the fastest and smartest. So an experienced fighter can handle him. With his vast knowledge of the monster's vulnerabilities, Zik thought he could handle an opponent like the Yellow Orc. In the end, as you and I already know, our hero actually succeeded in killing the monster. Heard that story. Lizzie thought Zeke was a fraud and a liar. After all, no sane player would believe that a rookie blacksmith could defeat an Orc by himself. When suddenly, Zik said, Do you doubt it? Can't you see that? After defeating the Orc, Zik received the title of Patron of the Orcs. This title is given to those players who strike fear into the hearts of the orcs. One could be happy for Zik, but Lizzie was angry. She didn't believe the blacksmith could kill monsters. But it didn't matter. She couldn't handle a monster that saw a sword, or more often a sword right at his head, and Kira had no choice but to open herself up and dodge. And then he said. And this way she stayed alive, and kept the money. All of a sudden, Lizzie said, Hey, I know how this is going to sound, but do you want to work together? In the current situation, their union is very logical. After all, they both want to fulfill this quest, especially since Lizzie knows how to avoid the Black Crescent Moon. Meanwhile, Guilford and the Red Tigers have already arrived at the bridge that leads to the canyon. It's been a while since Guilford was poisoned with Hydra blood, so all his vitals are back to normal. And also, after fighting Kira, the Red Tiger learned to sense his presence, even in a state of invisibility. When he saw the sword flying at his head, Cyrus had no other option but to reveal himself and dodge. Suddenly, he said, I was sure I had concealed my presence well. How did you sense me? Guilford laughed and replied, You're a fool if you think I'm weak. It's all going to happen, kid. You never dreamed it. Kira, that made me laugh. With a snap of his fingers, he ordered his warriors to attack the Red Tigers again. A veritable hail of arrowheads rained down on Guilford and his crew. And then Kira said, You talk a lot, but you'll end up being destroyed by this little guy. Most of the arrows the leader of the Red Tigers was able to deflect, but unfortunately some of his men were killed. But the arrows wouldn't stop flying. Then Guilford ordered the creation of an ice arrow to protect those left behind. But the same trick never works twice with assassins. From the very beginning, the mage was their priority target. Taking advantage of the shock, Kira plunged his dagger right into his neck and his companions slaughtered all the remaining Red Tigers. But even with such an attack, Kira couldn't kill the Red Tiger. Still, it seems Storm Guilford's reputation is exaggerated. The final blow remains. As suddenly, from behind a hill nearby, there was a loud noise of a cart rushing by, and driving that cart, as you might have guessed, was our Zeke. When he saw Kira, he shouted, I'm her, little thieves! I have something for you! Catch the present, Zeke added. 
and pushed the heavy cart straight at the assassin. It was foolish to hope the cart would harm him in any way. With one swing of his dagger, Kira sliced the strip in two. When he saw our hero in front of him, Kira said, I heard that you were lucky to escape from my guys. And now you're back, you look like you want to die. But literally, within seconds, Assassin felt his cloak getting wet and his whole body reeking of gasoline. Noticing the Assassin's confusion, Zik threw a bottle of flaming mixture at him. That's what it means to work with your head, not your muscles, as soon as the bottle broke. Everything in the neighborhood went up in flames, taking with it an entire assassin squad and most importantly, their commander. To be perfectly honest, Lizzie came up with this plan. In the long time she's been playing Arpedia, she learned how to deal with her enemies with her mind. The cart that Zik pushed at Cyrus was filled with barrels of what was called explosive spirit. Lizzie took these barrels to sell to the dwarves. You can tell by the smell alone how strong the alcohol is. It was so strong it smelled identical to gasoline. But with gasoline, it had another similarity besides the smell. Even a few drops of explosive spirit explode at the slightest contact with fire. Think about it. It doesn't just burn. It explodes. Anyway, their plan was pretty simple. Douse Kira with explosive spirit, then set her on fire. The explosion was supposed to be so powerful that even a rancher would die. And then, Zik said. All in all, a good plan. Assuming we got rid of Cyrus, what do we do with the rest of the assassins? Lizzie was surprised to hear that question. After all, she had thought they would blow up all the other assassins along with Kira. But our hero knew very well that there was not the slightest chance that Kira would be standing next to the rest of the group. He thought that Kira would choose the most conspicuous place. Plus, even if they get rid of Kira, the rest of the assassins will try to kill them. The way they are, the death of their leader won't stop them. And that's when Zeke came up with his plan. Since the assassins are going to ambush us, they'd have to hide somewhere for a while. And in order for the plan to eliminate the Black Crescent Moon to work perfectly, we first need to blow up all their possible hideouts. Knew the right places to blow up the canyon. In other words, Zeke simply wanted to bring the canyon down on assassins' heads. And I have to admit, that plan worked out just fine. The canyon is blown, the assassins are defeated. Looking at the huge explosion, Zeke involuntarily shouted out, Wow! I had my doubts, but it worked! Vulnerable spots in the rocks, Zykar thanks to the structure skill. And the more he learned it, the more fun he had. He even wanted to do some experiments after he finished the expedition. As he was about to leave, Zik heard footsteps behind him, but he thought he had just heard them. Suddenly someone shouted, How far are you going? Even though the assassins have little health, Kira was able to survive a blast of that magnitude. Jean seems to have forgotten how he used to be a rancher himself and survived worse things than explosions. There's a reason why regular players call ranchers educated monsters. Kira's eyes poured blood, and his voice became completely mad, his whole body reflecting with anger. Suddenly, he shouted, You'll regret making me angry. Meanwhile, Guilford and the Red Tigers were already on the bridge. He still doesn't know what caused that explosion. But because of it, he was able to survive. As they were about to leave, Guilford noticed in the distance a girl running towards him. When she came running, Lizzie fell to her knees and said, Sir, we've bought some time. We need to get to the other side faster. Hearing this, the Red Tiger couldn't contain his surprise and asked, Wait, you mean to say that you were the one who set off that explosion? Yes, Master, I am a blacksmith, replied the girl, after learning that Zeke was involved in the explosion that saved his life. Guilford decided to wait for him at the entrance to the bridge. The whole point is that this is the second time our hero has saved the life of a Red Tiger. And being a man of honor, Guilford can't leave without him. Meanwhile, Zeke tries not to die at the hands of Kira, and thanks to his weapon destruction skill, he succeeds. Seeing that our hero was able to break one of his daggers, Kira laughed and said, the same skill he used before. You think I can be defeated by such tricks? Suddenly Zeke felt a sharp pain all over his body, and his health was running low. It's one of Kira's exclusive skills, which he learned when he became a ranker. It's a skill called residue attack. You can endlessly dodge dagger attacks and arrows, but it is impossible to dodge this skill. Walking up to Zik, Kira said, Don't tell me you were going to dodge the whole time. I'm kind today, so I'll kill you quickly. At that moment, a smile appeared on Zik's face, and he shouted, Now! When Kira heard that, he was frightened, because he thought that our heroes had hidden a few more barrels of explosive spirit. But looking around, he realized that even if they had hidden something somewhere, it had long since exploded. In the meantime, Kira was trying to find more bombs. Zeke started to run away. 
It's obvious to a fool that a blacksmith can't defeat an assassin, much less a ranker. Therefore, escape is the only chance for salvation. Missing Zeke, Kira, with a sense of unfinished business, returned to his temporary shelter, which was located in the mountain of Nemesis. Our hero so much angered this assassin that he was even going to find him in real life, when suddenly he felt something approaching him from behind. Instinctively, he drew his blade and cut. That's something. When he looked closely, he realized he'd been hit with a packet of cookies. But what kind of idiot would do something like that? Holy shit, our idiot. I hope this is part of the plan, otherwise it's pure suicide. He miraculously escaped alive last time, and now he's back in his lair. But luckily, the surprise effect worked. He was able to cut the assassin in half. But as we already know, killing an assassin doesn't mean he's dead. The skill our hero encountered is called Shadow Bait. When used, the host summons a clone that moves like the main body and disappears after taking damage. Did Kira really expect our hero to follow him? Part of the plan or not, Kira won't let Zik leave here alive. Walking up to our hero, the assassin said, I have to admit, you were hard to deal with. Maybe even harder than going after Gilforth. But this is the end. As suddenly, the assassin felt some kind of plants wrapped around his legs, and with every second they squeezed tighter and tighter. Not many people know, but there are no objects or monsters in this cave. But there is one very interesting plant. Cave vine, also known as death ropes. They grab onto any objects in the vicinity and disappears itself as time passes. Trying to escape its grasp is pointless. Even the strongest weapon in the game will not be able to cut the cave crawlway. Still, it was part of the plan. The stakes were incredibly high, but luckily, it all worked out perfectly. Once again, Kira was able to fool one of the strongest rankers in the game. Infuriated, Kira shouted, I hate it! Using tricks all the way to the end. What are you going to do now? With no combat skills and A weapons. Fortunately, Zeke doesn't need weapons or combat skills to finish off an assassin. To him, all he needed was a pickaxe that could kill the stone golem. Seeing the pickaxe, assassin laughed and said, And this is your secret weapon, a regular pickaxe. Don't be ridiculous. Well now, let's find out how effective the pickaxe is against the assassin rancher. Even though Kira was sure he wouldn't die from the pickaxe, but he was sure it would hurt. As suddenly... There was a loud and resounding sound of metal against stone. What's he doing? Why did Zik hit the rock? Why didn't he kill the assassin while he had the chance? Seeing this, Kira laughed and said, What kind of loser are you? You can't even hit a standing target. With complete indifference, and steel in his voice replied, No. First of all, you're a loser, and secondly, I'm screwed. I hit, right in the core of it from the rock, Zik added. From the point of impact, huge cracks began to spread across the floor and all the walls, radiating blue. By destroying the core of the cave, the Zeke has triggered a process of destruction. In a couple of minutes, this cave will be just an ordinary rubble pile. Kira had never heard of such a skill, so he thought our hero was bluffing. But the trembling walls quickly erased his doubts. Dick can safely walk out of this cave at any moment, which cannot be said of the assassin. Everything happened exactly as our hero had planned from the beginning. He's the first rookie in history to solo kill a ranker. All the while, Guilford, along with the Red Tigers and Lizzie, waited for Zeke near the bridge. Everyone but Guilford and Lizzie thought Zeke was already dead, but it had been hours since Lizzie and Zeke had separated. And then, Guilford said, he didn't look like a man who could die for nothing. I believe he will be soon. And indeed, after only a few minutes, the Zeke came to the bridge. True, he was badly wounded and tired, but still alive. And considering he was fighting a rancher, he was very lucky, when all of a sudden one of the Red Tigers yelled, Holy shit! You actually came back alive! Zik whispered, raising his hand, on which was a gold ring. Without this object, he would have died for sure. The thing is, the cave began to collapse much faster than Zik could have imagined. And this gold ring he bought at the beginning of the expedition from Lizzie. It's a teleportation ring. Zik had no idea that this ring would actually save his life. Taking off the ring, our hero said, It's still a robbery. The ring is not worth its money. But thank you, machinist. All he had was a defective, useless object, but he found a use for it anyway, and survived. You don't see guys like that very often. Moment, Lydia. Seriously considering making him a full-fledged slave. As suddenly, Guilford laughed and said, Amazing, you were able to defeat Cyrus, my school. Sighing heavily, Zeke replied, Yeah, your school. I won, unlike one shaggy old man. For some reason, Guilford no longer got mad at Zeke when he made fun of him. But on the contrary, it has become a kind of tradition that lifts everyone's spirits in a difficult moment. Well, that's a mess our hero has gotten out of. 
It's time to move on to the Nozark. Nozark, it's a terribly harsh place on the edge of the world where dwarves live. But nevertheless, the beauty and grandeur of this fortress cannot fail to amaze. As soon as the Nozark gate opened, the quest to create a trade route was completed. Of the 80 players who started the expeditions, only 28 made it to the end. These people will receive gifts from the king himself. And it's all thanks to Zeke. I can't believe they finally did it. Our hero gained 3,000 experience points and 700 prestige points. Finally, Zeke reached his 55th. As of this moment, he is no longer a rookie blacksmith. He can also create and repair C-rank equipment. But the main reward our hero received from the king was the shield of Videk. This is an A-rank item that can only be used by blacksmiths. It can block absolutely any attack, but only once a day. Character name. Zik. It's been a month since his creation and choice of profession as a blacksmith. This user used to be a ranker. Character Bartz. After creating Zeke, has shown signs of unconventional play. Defeated the raging stone golem that triggers the hidden event. And moved to Nosark, where the next trigger of this event is located. The development team thinks this user has a good chance of triggering events in Mizinia. During one of the meetings, someone said, Suppose a level 55 blacksmith could somehow activate events. Why should we delay the updates? The thing is, this event could make a big change to the entire Orpedia. And if it overlaps with the release of an update, users may get confused. But the head of communications thought otherwise. To be honest, this man was interested in nothing but money. And the release of a new update meant hundreds of thousands of dollars in his account. When suddenly, a young guy walked into the office and said, We're going to postpone the update, and I'm taking responsibility. This seemingly ordinary guy is the head of the company that developed Arpedia, and his name was Scott. He wanted to postpone the update not only because Zick can change the game, but also because he wants to change the update a bit. To be honest, the list is pretty big. Scott wants to make this update the biggest since the game's release. To develop and implement all these updates, it will take some more time. In the event that the growth rate is lower than expected, the cattle will take full responsibility. Seeing the scale of the work, the head of the development department shouted, Wait! Even if we work 24-7, it will take at least two years to complete such an update. They don't know that Scott did the bulk of the work during his vacation. So the development team has just a little bit left. If Zick opens a hidden scenario, and then a new update comes out, Arpedia would literally become a new game. Meanwhile, Jin decided to take a little break from Arpedia as he suddenly remembered his parents' words about their failure to help him during his difficult period. But the thing is, this case hasn't bothered Jean in a long time, and the parents are just worrying for nothing. It was my sophomore year of high school. That year, a kid named Kim transferred in, from Yongwon High School. At his previous school, he had developed a reputation as a total psycho. His former classmates advised him not to make eye contact with him ever, so it was a very ordinary day. But for some reason, Kim had been looking for Jin all day. The thing is, Jin didn't do anything that would make Kim go after him. But when he found him, Kim hit our hero with all his might. He broke his nose and knocked out some teeth. Jin was asleep when Kim found him and beat him up. So he didn't even have time to realize anything. Kim ended up beating Jin for several minutes without stopping. But none of the classmates even helped him. After school, he went straight home where his younger brother met him. Like every worried brother, he tried to find out what had happened, but Jin kept repeating the same thing, that he fell down the stairs. And he's fine. Of course it was a lie. He felt disgusted at that moment. From that day on, his school life became a living hell. Kim was looking for him every single day to beat him up. Friends became more and more estranged, until one fine day he became scum. Every day he was beaten, abused, and abused again. And when Jean asked his abusers why they were doing it, all he heard in return was laughter, even more hurtful words. It was as if they were doing it all for no reason. But the last point was a guy named Google Chan. He seems like a nice, well-mannered guy. President of the school. He was a big hit with the students and the teachers. And the girls were crazy about him. Once again, when Jin was being beaten by the crowd, Chan went up to him, took him by the hair, and said, I wonder why you keep getting beaten. I'll explain. Listen carefully. For no reason! You don't need a reason to beat up an idiot like you! I don't like you, that's all. He said something else, but Jin doesn't remember it because he was knocked unconscious by another blow. Remembering this terrible time, Jin couldn't stand it and shouted to the whole street that he, you bloody idiot, better not get in my face. I'll turn you into a cutlet with the sense of combat I got in the game. Suddenly, a piece of paper flew into his face. 
The wind was so strong that it was impossible to catch the piece of paper. From panic, Jin started running in circles and accidentally crashed into some huge man. Falling to the ground, the leaf fell from his face. Jin wanted to apologize, but there was a lump in his throat, because, as you may have realized, the school bully Kim was standing in front of him. It was because of him that Jin hated his life. Of the hero was simultaneously filled with rage and fear, but in the end, fear took over. Grabbing Jin by his sweater, Kim picked him up off the floor and said, I think I've seen you somewhere. Never mind, are you going to apologize? When all of a sudden, Kim's cell phone rang, and he said, Lucky idiot, if I see you again, I'll kill you. Apparently he got a call from someone incredibly important, or Kim wouldn't just let anyone go. Half an hour later, a very interesting conversation took place in one of the city's nightclubs. After high school, like many underachievers, Kim connected his life with Arpedia. But he had a boss, who raised the tax because a new trade route had opened up. And who do you think Kim was working for? That's right, the Chan. Jean thought school story was a thing of the past, but an unexpected encounter with Kim proved otherwise. Yeah, he's no longer afraid of other people or leaving the house, like he used to be. To stop being afraid, Gina decided to join a wrestling class, so that next time, he could fight back with dignity. Filled with motivation, Jin literally opened the door with his foot and shouted, Hello, I'm here to study martial arts. But when he saw Sensei training his men, Jin's fighting spirit immediately disappeared. When he saw the mountain of unconscious bodies, he whispered, Oh right, I'm unemployed, I don't have extra money for training. But it was too late. Sensei saw Jin. For a teacher, money is not the main thing. He is ready to help those who need help for free. Realizing he couldn't even last ten seconds in the ring, Jean decided to leave, justifying it by saying he'd just gotten the wrong door. But at the entrance, he crashed into a two-meter tall man. It's not even a man. It's a living mountain of muscle. Damn it! The man our hero crashed into was none other than Storm Guilford. Guilford took a long look at our hero's face as suddenly he turned pale and cried out, Smith! Coincidentally, Jean chose the same martial arts gym that Stormy Guilford practices at. Although, it's more correct to say that this hall was the base of the Red Tigers. Sensei suddenly said, Judging by your clothes, you are also practicing martial arts. Especially for Jean. The coach even made a special arrangement. He would do anything to make sure Jin went to them. Guilford couldn't wait to get in the ring with Jeannie, even though their relationship was friendly. But he still wanted revenge on Jin for his favorite sword. Realizing he had nothing to lose, Jin said, Okay, let's give it a try. I hope we get along. My name is Jin Johan. When he heard the name of our hero, Guilford realized that he had heard the name before, but could not remember where. When suddenly he said, I remember. The son of the owner of the store I used to frequent is called Jin Johan. He was also friends with my daughter. Upon hearing this, Jin said in a trembling voice, Excuse me, may I know your name? In real life, Guilford's name was Derek Tesu, and his daughter's name was Rin. Upon recognizing Storm Guilford's real name, Jin laughed and said, Funny, it's been a long time since I've seen you, Uncle. The realization finally came to Derek that Jin was the same little boy who had played with his daughter all his childhood. So Derek decided he was going to be Jin's personal trainer. Methods, he's very doubtful. However, it is impossible not to become stronger after such training. After finishing that hellish workout, John Covey just liked bringing his exhausted body home. And the first thing he did was go to Arpedia online. Zeke thought he was going to get a quest from the dwarves. And after completing it, we'll level up and unlock a new skill. But it was the exact opposite. No matter what workshop he went to, the dwarves kicked him out. It's no secret that dwarves are a very closed race. Our hero did not expect the dwarves to be so wild. If he had asked even more persistently, it was not impossible that they would have chased him with knives. Wandering through the cold nose arc, <laughs> Zick quickly ran out of stamina, <laughs> so he began to look for a store. Literally, a few blocks from where he was. Zeke found a small store where he could buy food. All that would be fine, but the most common cheese potato here cost a thousand two hundred gold coins. For that price, you could buy a whole set of rookie armor. Zeke, with real surprise in his voice, said, Why is it stored behind glass? They're just regular potatoes. You gotta be kidding me. We have the cheapest store in the whole town, and the products are some of the best, replied the salesman. Direct trade has only recently started, but it seems that prices have yet to normalize. But there's no choice but to replenish energy and stamina. But there was a problem. Zick didn't even have enough money for a window of cheese potatoes. He'd forgotten he'd spent all his money on iron in the gold rush. He thought he could get a job in a blacksmith shop. And then, Jin asked me to give him a small discount. 
and sell the potatoes for 400 gold coins. It wasn't hard to guess that the dwarf would say no. But to throw a man out of a store like that, dwarves aren't exactly the friendliest people. Energy level was so low that health began to gradually decline. Zeke even considered just dying. If he died, his stamina and energy would be at their maximum after rebirth. But to die, our hero risks losing everything he's longed for. No choice. Zeke will have to sell the shield the king gave him to keep himself alive. Our hero liked this shield very much. Because of its special skill, he doesn't want to sell it. But since the shield is A rank, he will not be able to use it for a while. Besides, in this village, the weapon is unlikely to make money on repairs. When suddenly, a dwarf came up to Zik. Judging by his clothes, he was a blacksmith. The dwarf really liked our hero's shield. When suddenly, our hero said, What's his name? I don't know, he's so precious to me. So Zik was just padding the price. I'll give you five big gold pieces. I can't give you more, replied the dwarf. Since when did dwarves suddenly become polite? But to be honest, the blacksmith's offer was quite tempting. After all, five large gold pieces was five million coins. Well, only a true fool would turn down such a lucrative offer. Zeke received a small handful of coins in exchange for his shield. Either Zeke misunderstood, or the dwarf was a real crook. And instead of five million, our hero received only five hundred gold coins. While our hero was in a stupor, the gnome got into his car and drove off. Luckily, our hero had a good memory of what the gnome looked like. So after describing him to passers-by, they told him where he could be found. When we got to the shop, Zeke ran into a closed door. But he wouldn't give up, banging on it and yelling, I know you're here. Open the door now or I'll break it down. The dwarf might have opened the door for him if he had heard his wild cries. But the noise in his workshop was so intense that the dwarf didn't even hear his thoughts. The shield itself was of no interest to the gnome. He only needed the magic stones that were in it. What he needed them for is still unclear. But judging by what was in his workshop, it's unlikely to be for a collection. And meanwhile, Zik ambushed the gnome's workshop. He was ready to kill him to get his money back. When suddenly, outside the workshop, he heard a strange childish laughter. It was the little gnomes, who, uh, painted on the walls of the workshop. Vandalism, pure and simple. Zeke didn't know much about gnome writing, but it wasn't hard to guess that they weren't writing him a birthday greeting. And then, Zeke decided to approach these kids and find out why they were doing it. When they see a grown man, the kids immediately start making excuses and saying it's not what they think it is. When suddenly, the serious expression on his face changed to a smile, and Zeke said, I don't think anything. Taking the girl's paintbrush, Zeke shouted, Give it to me. It's hard to call what you were doing drawings. Because if you draw, you have to do it properly. And if you want to make him angry, you can't do that. But I can. Meanwhile, the dwarf was in his workshop trying to install the magic stones he had gotten from the shield into his device. Well, to his deep regret, the magic signal of these stones didn't match. So he'd just wasted his time and money. After collecting all the parts of the broken shield, the gnome decided to scrap it. Zeke waited till sundown for the dwarf to come out. And when he saw him, he shouted, You're out at last! Give me back my shield now, or I'll take it by force. It took me a long time to get this chip, and you screwed me and gave me only 500 gold pieces for it, even though you promised me five big gold pieces. The big gold ones are a million and up in case you don't know, you uneducated hillbilly, added Zick. The gnome listened to our hero, but did not emit any emotions. After looking around, the gnome said, Did you paint my house? Yes, and that's just child's play compared to what you bastard did, Zick replied angrily. Looking at the drawings of our hero, the dwarf thought, It feels like a five-year-old child did it. He obviously wanted to depict a broken arm. How cool is that? And judging by his clothes, a human blacksmith. Not bad. Maybe we should have him do it. As if he were a friend, the dwarf held out his hands to Zick and said, Don't shout like that. Here, take it. As he picked up the bag, Zick felt something wrong spilling the contents onto the floor. Our hero was speechless. On the floor, there was a perfectly disassembled videocon shield. Suddenly he said to us, Don't worry, I made it neat. You just need to put it back together and it will be just like the old one. You're a blacksmith. Building a shield is a piece of cake for you. For a few seconds, Zeke stood as still as if he wasn't breathing. But just as the dwarf was about to leave, Zeke grabbed his shoulder and said, Unbelievable! Can you please tell me how you did it? I want to learn from you. The standard skills that every blacksmith possesses are weapon building and repair. And in order to make weapons because of rare and expensive materials, you need to follow certain instructions. However, by making the slightest mistake in manufacturing, you can fail. 
What if this failed weapon can be disassembled? You can recycle the materials used and create new weapons that nobody knows about. You can even create objects with unusual characteristics. In other words, with this skill you can change the characteristics of objects, disassembling and reassembling them. This skill is much better than a shield. Surprisingly, the dwarf didn't even have to beg to take Zeke on as an apprentice. Because dwarves usually hide their craft from other races, trying to keep their secrets. And the first lesson, their first lesson is right now. For this, the gnome invited Zeke to his workshop. Going down to the basement, the gnome said, You're such a sissy. You'll get used to it soon enough. The thing is, there was a terrible musty smell in the gnome's workshop. Before entering the workshop, the gnome asked, Man, do you know anything about Andurus? Andurus is a legendary monster that dwells northeast of Nasark. And he's also a big fan of gemstones, so the dwarves shower him with jewelry and handmade items. Except for the fact that it looks like a thief. It's really just a dragon. Except it's very jealous that it only has gems from the dwarves, replied Zeke. Hearing our hero's answer, the dwarf laughed and said, There are fools from the east who offer this lizard jewels. But I am not like them. I'm going to kill it and develop the gold mines in the north, a plan the dwarf had been developing for years. And to fulfill this grand plan, he created this, a mechanical replica of Endurus. It's a masterpiece of his entire life named Mecha. All the parts are properly matched and perform their functions perfectly. All the gnome needs to do is to find a suitable energy carrier whose shape and wavelength match. When suddenly the dwarf said, Let's get right down to business. I won't explain everything to you, it's too long. All you have to do is go to the ice palace. Meanwhile, in that very same ice palace, a group of players were clearing out the dungeon. It was a group of four players, two mages, and one archer and one tank, by clearing the first level of the dungeon. One of the team members asked about how this Deborah dungeon came to be, if the update hadn't already happened. There are a lot of different opinions on the forum about it. There have been many theories, but it seems like someone explained two weeks ago that there was a micro patch of Deborah, which is how it ended up showing up. By the way, the archer in this group was the familiar Sia. After hearing that this dungeon had appeared two weeks ago, she said, It's funny. I was recently clearing one of the Deborah dungeons. And then she remembered that she promised to contact Zeke as soon as she got back in the game. But she forgot to do that. She decided to write a zine as soon as finish mopping up this dungeon. And then a tank named Loki came back. While talking, Loki noticed the silhouette of a man in the distance. It was too dangerous to approach him, so the SIA had to deal with him. But a second before the shot was fired, Sia changed her mind. Because she saw a familiar face. When she saw our hero, the girl shouted, Oh, Zeke! Hi! I wanted to write to you when we clean up this dungeon. How did you end up here? An hour earlier, in the gnome's workshop. Zeke was studying the ice palace, so that no trouble would befall him. A dwarf told Zeke that this dungeon was inhabited by Deborah's wooden soldiers. They are a little different from the ones our hero has met before. The dwarf thought they were Deborah's secret design, when suddenly the dwarf said, This is the creature that can start my precious dragon. The thing is, Deborah is a genius at magical engineering. Despite its small size, the heart this woman created for the new tree soldier has a strong energy. The heart of a regular wooden soldier will not be enough. But if the dwarf can dismantle the heart of a new wooden soldier when he can create the right power source to revive his dragon. Anyway, the gnome has given our hero a quest. Zeke has to get 30 hearts of new wooden soldiers, and only after that, he will become the gnome's apprentice. To be honest, Zeke didn't really want to do this quest, but he will be able to explore a new dungeon. As suddenly Saya said, Zeke, would you like to join our guild? We'll help you with the hearts, and you help us clean up the area. Upon hearing that Sia wanted to invite the blacksmith to join the team, the mage named Aaron started to become indignant. And then, Sia leaned over to her and whispered with frantic eyes, Aaron. Do you have something against Zik? Did I get that right? He was very pleased that Sia had invited him, but a sweep wasn't in his plans, so he wanted to decline. But Sia took his hand and said, What are you standing there for? Let's go faster. Together, we're not afraid of any dungeon. Remember that stone golem? And yes, sorry for not riding, the girl added. Well, we have to admit, going through the dungeon as a team is much easier and more fun. Sia's team's abilities are more than enough to handle the wooden soldiers without any problems. As promised, they helped Zeke obtain the required number of wooden soldier hearts. Now, it was Zeke's turn to fulfill his part of the bargain, and help them through the dungeon. He gets along well with everyone in the guild, and if he keeps this up, 
he'll be able to clean up in no time. The only thing that bothers him is the unexplored nature of this dungeon. When suddenly Einar said, Hey, uncle, can't you at least do something? Otherwise, as a selfish person, you are only collecting hearts. Before our hero could respond. As Sia intervened in the conversation and said, You're wrong. He's saving his energy right now. If he shows his skills, you will definitely be shocked. Apparently Sia has high hopes for Zeke. I think he needs to do something now, so he doesn't let Sia down. But thank goodness they've come up to the boss's room, so the display of their abilities can be put on hold for a bit. Upon entering the boss room, the players saw a woman crying in front of them. Judging from her hands, she was wearing some kind of curse. But when Einir came closer to her to find out what was wrong, the girl grabbed her arm and shouted, Gotcha! The monster showed his true colors. The monster was Medusa Gorgon. Her hair was snakes. Her skin was covered with scales. And her mouth was from ear to ear. But most frightening of all were her snake eyes. Everyone but Loki was able to dodge her previous attack. As a tank, he had a very poor speed rating. Hiding her eyes, the jellyfish said, Poor, believe me, where have your friends gone who have left you here alone? If you tell me, I'll keep you alive and let you walk away unharmed. I promise. Wow! And this Loki was more powerful than you could ever imagine. With a single spell, he was able to block the jellyfish's stone wall. While Loki was distracting the jellyfish on his own, the other team members were devising a plan and restoring power. All except Zeke. He became a statue due to the fact that he was covering the Einir from the stone wall jellyfish. Fortunately, this effect would only last for ten minutes. The girl was very worried about it. She thought he was a useless ballast and he covered for her without a second thought. Sia advised Einir to apologize to Dick after they were done with the jellyfish. Except there was one small problem. No one knew how to fight the monster whose attacks turn you into a stone. When suddenly Isaac pulled out a magic mirror capable of reflecting anything and said, On the forums, I read that Gorgon is the possible boss of this dungeon. So I brought this with me. Well, maybe this plan will work, especially since they have a blacksmith on their team who sees the vulnerabilities in the breed. While the rest of the team was gaining strength and devising a plan, Loki was holding back the Gorgon jellyfish with all his might. But little by little, he was losing his strength. The attacks were too strong. But then, a team came to his aid. Einir healed Loki and restored his energy. Saya and Isaac started attacking the jellyfish with all their powerful techniques. Having stunned the monster, their team launched a counterattack. Surprisingly, even though their guild was founded not too long ago, they act as one. The boss battle was in full swing, and Zik would be a statue for another seven minutes. Seeing that the jellyfish was about to activate the petrification skill, Isaac took out a magic mirror and reflected its attack. The only problem is that the success of the reflection depends directly on the strength of the monster and the strength of the mirror user. Fortunately, Isaac turned out to be a very strong magician. He was able to fend off the petrification attack, though not without difficulty. Yay, our plan worked. So the jellyfish is dead? Isaac smiled and replied, Not yet, but don't worry. After fending off her attack, I turned her into stone for a while. You could say she's almost dead, just one last blow to go. When suddenly, the whole dungeon was filled with a squeak. The pentagram on the jellyfish statue began to glow. After a few seconds, the jellyfish's stone cover crumbled, and the squeaking was replaced by wild laughter. When the jellyfish returned, it said, the worthless little men thought they could kill me with my own weapons. But after the jellyfish returned, a life indicator appeared above it. And with that, our heroes began to lose their life points. Only Isaac remained conscious, thanks to the passive skill of Spirit Wizard. Saw that all of his comrades had passed out due to the jellyfish using life-stealing skills. And then, he decided to use his magic mirror to fend off the monster's attack. As suddenly, the jellyfish used the stone wall again. And because the magic mirror was broken, it couldn't reflect this attack. In the end, she single-handedly defeated the entire Sia team. But this time, a state of petrification. It will be active as long as the jellyfish is alive. She took the magic mirror from tongue and said, Oh, it's been a long time since I've seen it. That ugly mirror is my only weakness. Well, that was before I met Deborah. Now I'm not going to get that childish thing. And all thanks to Deborah's blessing. It's a skill that activates automatically when your health stats are less than half. Along with this, resistance to all attacks increases, magical defense increases significantly, and it becomes possible to use some of Deborah's magic. Having received the blessing of the Doboras, 
Medusa became many times stronger. You could say she became almost all-powerful. This jellyfish is very different from the jellyfish in the other dungeons. That damn Deborah made it a monster. Worst of all, when you activate Deborah's blessing skill, Medusa has access to a portion of the witch's own power. Would it really end like this? Isaac couldn't believe they'd come all this way to lose, when suddenly, the light from the spell dissipated, and the petrification descended. The players looked around and saw the jellyfish's head on the floor, separate from the body. Granted, they couldn't win, <gasps> but they were able to buy enough time for the petrification spell to wear off our hero. Using the effect of surprise, Zick crept up from behind and cut off her head. A few hours ago, before Zick went to the ice fortress, he asked the dwarf for the use of his anvil. Realizing that he might encounter something extremely dangerous in his new uncharted dungeon, Zick decided to make a sword out of the remains of his shield. Everyone calls him the Bolden King of Mending, but his weapon-building skills are just as good. Of course, due to his low level, he can't make an A-rank Vidic shield again, but he found a way out of it. He used the remaining parts of the shield to create a weapon to fit him. He ended up with a Mimun sword, an item exclusive to blacksmiths. The special skill of this sword was instant kill, available only once. The Mimun was extremely precious to him, and he wanted to use it only as a last resort. He ended up spending it on a jellyfish. Well, all things considered, it was a last resort. When suddenly, Sia's team started throwing Zeke into the air, shouting, Yay, yay! Filled with a sense of triumph, everyone was over the moon. Suddenly, Sia said, See? I told you that Zeke was incredible. After defeating the dungeon boss, as it should be, our heroes got to the Room of Rewards. This time, the reward room looks even weirder than last time. Apparently, all dungeons related to Deborah are not like the others. After searching the entire room, Zick found no reward chest, not even a small box. But that just couldn't happen. There should always be a reward room after killing a boss, especially when it's a boss with hidden abilities. Chances are that the reward is somewhere nearby, but well hidden. When Zeke looked at the Shard of Stone, he started laughing like a madman and said, God, whose idea was this a real joker? Video surprised faces of other players. Zeke said, I'm not crazy, it's not rock, it's lime. That's what was smeared all over the table. Don't you still don't get it? There's definitely some reason why lime was put on the stone table. That means there's treasure in the table. Having activated the structure skill, Zeke began to clear the table of all the lime. Piece by piece. With each stroke, some engravings became clearer and clearer. Altogether, there were three paintings on the table, which showed different eras of Arpedia. After looking at all the pictures, it was clear that this was most likely the story of the creation of the Ice Fortress. In addition to the pictures, the mural also had some inscriptions, in an ancient language that only Isaac could read. A magician could read ancient runes, not because of intelligence, but because of a magic monocle, which increases intelligence and deciphers texts. Ancient Mycenaean civilization, the imitators of God will be exterminated for their arrogance. The time of destruction of the Air Fortress is 7 hours and 28 minutes. Stop time and travel back in time. Well, in addition to the Ice Fortress, there was an Air Fortress. Apparently, it was the destruction of the Air Fortress that was shown on the fresco. Learning about the Air Fortress, our heroes felt the room begin to shake and the floor glow. Magicians immediately realized that it was a magical teleportation circle. After opening their eyes, our heroes saw a previously unseen fortress in front of them. Suddenly, they all received the same message. Guild, CEI. You have completed the passage of the Ice Palace. The Air Fortress of Mykenia has been discovered for the first time by you. Congratulations. Also, all have been awarded 2,000 reputation points and the title of Air Fortress Discoverers. Now clearly, finding this fortress is the reward for passing the Ice Palace. As suddenly, the gates of the fortress opened and out of it came out half-man, half-goat. Approaching our heroes, he said, You are the Guild, family, of these. That's right. I came out to meet you. Such creatures he calls chimeras. Despite their appearance, they are quite educated and have a sense of high culture. Chimera was ordered to meet the guests and take them to the king. In the throne room, our heroes were greeted by Tritius Willow, or rather, his spirit. He is the only king of the kingdom of Mycenae. Seeing the king, Isaac said, Don't be afraid. He's just an ordinary spirit who couldn't leave because of his attachment to this world. Seeing the agitated face of the guests, Ivaniche said, I understand that this is a country. Please calm down and listen to me. The kingdom of Mycenae has prospered for many thousands of years. Their magical technology brought income to the whole world. Taking it as a basis, they ruled the kingdom peacefully. 
But the problem was that the technology was too advanced, and the Mycenaeans were accused of trespassing on divine domain. The barely surviving Ivani and a few more of his people escaped on this air fortress. He ended up trapped underground and became a spirit. The whole story of the Chimeras, the punishment Mycenaeus received for creating them. When suddenly the king said, But I do not repent of what I have done. If the desire to know and learn new things is not guilty and God who created people so curious, it is a great shame to me that the knowledge of magic that I and my people have collected will disappear. Please, this air fortress is our kingdom's only legacy. I want to rebuild this fortress and tell the next generations about the exploits of Mycenae. Will you be able to fulfill my request? Ivani asked. After listening to the king, our heroes have a new quest. They need to help the king rebuild the fortress to tell about the existence of Mycenae. After seeing the quest information, Sia said, Although I don't like ghosts, but I will participate in the quest. How about you? After thinking about it, Zik said, I'm in favor of it. After all, hidden quests are rare in the game. I think it will be fun. The peculiarity of Arpedia is that refusing a quest can lead to an unexpected battle. If fighting with chimeras, a loss is assured. Well, thus every member of Sia's family accepts this quest. After accepting the quest, each of the players received a personal assignment. Zico needed to restart the fortress's air reactor, a task well suited for a blacksmith. The only thing is that the conditions are extremely high. After all, the mission requires at least a level 6 build, and Zik doesn't even have this skill learned at the moment. C needed to go to the elven forest and fetch some stone, and Isaac needed to draw a hovering magic circle at the base of the fortress. Aner, we needed to draw holy water from the Romney spring, and Loki needed to track down Deborah's whereabouts, as suddenly into the throne room bring a few chests, treasures which the king has prepared especially for our heroes. Anir, I got it, St. Peter's Cross. An epic item worth several hundred thousand gold coins. Isaac, the spellbook, and Loki's titanium shield. And epic levels, too. Saya got a bow called Angel Feather. It's an extremely good weapon and epic level, too. And of course, Zik, he got the sacred rune jacket. It increases skill by ten and stamina by a hundred. Zik couldn't believe that before completing the quest, he had already received an item that could restore his stamina by 100%. After receiving their gifts, our heroes were about to leave when Isaac said, Your Majesty, may I ask you a question? You said we were your first guests in 300 years. So you had Deborah the Witch as a guest 300 years ago? Isaac asked. Yes, this ungrateful woman promised to rebuild the fortress, but instead she discovered the knowledge of Mycenae and fled answered the king. Now, it's clear why the ice palace is directly connected to the air fortress. Upon hearing this, Zig said, Your Majesty, I apologize, but I also have a question. Where do I have to go to get to the ground? This question stumped the king. After all, he had never even tried to return to the ground. Meanwhile, a whole bunch of players decided to test themselves in an ice fortress. It's no wonder that this place attracts players so much, as it's a new location that no one really knows anything about. And who do you think might be near that coveted location? That would be the merchants, specifically Lizzie. She was offering everyone who wanted to conquer the Ice Fortress a magic mirror. But everyone was surprised to ask her why they needed it. Then tell Lisa that the boss of this dungeon is a jellyfish. And when the players heard about it, they'd go looking for magic mirrors. And Lizzie was right there. Ask how she knew about the jellyfish, but she didn't know. She just assumed. As suddenly, the ice wall behind Lizzie began to make a strange sound and strange glowing cracks appeared. After a few moments, the wall collapsed completely, and out of it fell Zik and the whole family, Zeke said as he climbed out of the ice fortress. You see, I told you, if you dig in the direction from where you hear the sound of the wind, we'll get out. But where are we now, I don't know. All the players who came to Lizzie's house stared at our heroes, because it's not every day you see players who get out from behind the wall. When suddenly, someone in the crowd shouted, Look at this! They have some new titles. Did a new update come out? Not even a minute later, our heroes have already started posting on the forums. They became known as the Conquerors of the Ice Fortress. The Sai family wanted to discuss the quest given to them by the king once they got out of the Ice Fortress. But the huge crowd of onlookers made it impossible. And then Isaac suggested that everyone meet in real life, so as not to make too much of a fuss. Everyone was thrilled with the idea except Gene. It was a real disaster for him. In the game, he has a very cool image of a smart and strong blacksmith. He thought that if they saw him in real life, they would be disappointed. Meanwhile, the air tower became an all-famous location, where thousands of players immediately headed. There's even a rumor in the news that this fortress is connected to the Ice Palace. 
and that this quest is connected to the witch Deborah. The problem is that now the quest from the king will get many strong guilds, and it's not a fact that the Sia family will be able to fulfill it first. However, many people think that the discoverers know the way to solve the mystery. So, still, our heroes have a bit of an advantage. But the biggest problem was that our heroes were banned from entering the game for a while. What time they opened a new dungeon and a new territory, people will chase them to get information, and those obsessed with the game might even go so far as to kill them. That's why the developers banned them from the game. But that way, there's a risk they'll lose the championship. But to me, life is more valuable than the title. When suddenly Jean walked into the cafe and said, Sorry I'm a little late. Having seen Zeke in real life, and Anir said with surprise, Is this guy the same uncle from the game? He doesn't look like him at all. And then Sia smiled and said, You don't say. The thing is, when Jean created Zeke, he was frail and sickly looking. Yes, it's time to get acquainted. Einir, in real life her name is Yuha. She's in 11th grade. Isaac. Actually Kim. He is 25 years old and in his fourth year of law school. Loki. Name is Hun. He's 26 years old. By Ridiculous Martial Arts. He enters the same gym as Jin. Upon hearing this, the Jinin asked in surprise, So, you too, took the dojo. Did you know that this hall belongs to the Rin family? Loki added. Hearing the guys talking, Rin blurted out, What? You go to my dad's gym too? And that's when things started to come together for our hero. He finally realized that Rin was his longtime girlfriend from childhood. Realizing this, Jean said, Hey Rin, my name's Jean, that's the one. The eldest son of a handbox supermarket owner. That you and your dad used to go to when you were kids. It turns out that only Hong knew that they were old friends. But because of his character, he didn't want to talk about it. She couldn't understand how she hadn't remembered Jin right away. But now she understood why he seemed so familiar. Well, now that everyone knows each other personally. So it's time to discuss the plan of action for the quest. Our heroes had plenty of ideas for the passage. They worked out a plan for each player, down to the smallest detail. I have to admit, it took them quite a while. Everyone lived next door to each other. Again, everyone except Jean. But before saying goodbye, Rin, Kim, Hoon asked for our hero's phone number, so that he could be contacted at any time. This the first time since middle school that Jean had met someone in real life and exchanged a phone number. It was such a strange and exciting moment for him at the same time. But it was exactly what he'd been missing all this time. Jean looked at his contact list for a long time and couldn't believe that he had actually made friends. When suddenly his cell phone rang, he was startled and almost dropped it from his hands. I wonder who called him. I mean, no one just calls him. And they agreed to call his new friends after the quest. Oddly enough, our hero gets a call from an unknown number. Normally, Jean doesn't answer calls from unknown numbers, but this time, for some reason, he decided to answer. The man who called Jean was just breathing heavily into the phone when suddenly, in a clearly changed voice, he said, Hi, Bartz. No, now do you have to name Zeke? You're probably wondering who I am. I'm the one who deleted your bars. Why am I calling? I was wondering how you feel about re-upgrading your character. Unable to bear such insolence, Jin shouted, Idiot! Are you mocking me? What do you want from me? You hacked into my account and now you're gloating? Jin added. As a friend, his interlocutor laughed and replied, Why are you so angry? You were very nice to me in the game. When he heard this, Jin's heartbeat increased several times. He asked in a voice shaking with anger, Did you and I meet in the game? Of course. Did you forget? Buddy, calm down. I called me to fight. I want to make a bet with you. I have already said that I play Arpedia, and I play to get rid of all hacked items. So while I'm sorting out the items, let's play hide and seek, if you can catch me. I'll give you back the bars. With all the items and abilities, I'm an advanced hacker, so it'll be hard for me to get one character back. What's up? Added the hacker. Before agreeing to Perry, Jean asked, What would happen if he couldn't find him? After thinking for a moment, the hacker said that if he lost, Jin would lose his character again. The stakes are high and the risks even higher. But still, the Zeke was designed to bring Bart's back. So Jean agreed. For the last time, Jean said, Walk and look around. When I catch you, I'll kill you without a second thought, because the hacker knew what our hero looked like in the game. Zeke wanted to level the playing field, so he came to the cyber police department. But even there, they couldn't help him. The hacker was very careful and cunning. So even the National Intelligence Service is unlikely to be able to do anything. Gene suspected the answer would be something like this. But it was worth a try. The hacker's words about seeing them in the game never left Gene's mind. He went over and over in his head all the people he could see. But that way, 
You can't really find out who the hacker is. He's been meeting and seeing a lot of people lately. You can't just suspect everyone without any evidence. Besides, it's not a given that the hacker didn't lie to Jin. It's possible that they've never even met. Either way, Jin decided to stick to his plan. We'll raise the smith's reputation and trace the route of movement and sale of weapons. Meanwhile, he had already returned to the gnome and brought him thirty new-looking wooden soldier hearts. Thanks to these hearts, the dwarf will be able to complete Max Dragon. In return, for the hearts of the wooden soldiers, Zeke received a training set from the blacksmith of Gallia. This book lays out all the basics of craftsmanship. Zeke needs to study it carefully and learn from it. In other words, the dwarf gave Zeke some sort of skill book. This, of course, was not what our hero expected, but it was better than nothing. But this book isn't just a skill book. It describes to the smallest detail how to disassemble and reassemble items. This knowledge is essential for Zeke to fulfill Mikinia's quest. After all, one of the requirements to pass this quest was the skill of precise assembly. Overflowing with optimism, Zeke set about his training. But it was more complicated than that. Brute force alone was not enough. And even using an understanding of structures, nothing works. Because this metal board is very fragile. It was made that way on purpose. So that the blacksmiths could hone their skills. I didn't understand what he was doing wrong because the book says that disassembly requires damage. But the item's durability is too low. If you can't disassemble it, you can't even think about reassembling it accurately. Even the skill of seeing the structure doesn't help. But the motivation's too high to stop halfway. Especially when he made a hacker bet 